Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, the big three. They come here for the knowledge. They come for the light. They come for the glory. Millions of dollars at stake. Careers on the line. The sound is deafening. The lights are blinding. The competition is fierce. They compete for prestige. They compete for money. They compete for us. Today, the console war reaches new heights. E3 is the battleground, and only one network brings it to you live. G4 and Attack of the Show present E3 06 Live. Six Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. Don't worry, it's still me, Kevin Pereira. And I'm Olivia Munn. It is day two of the biggest gaming event of the year, and only G4 is bringing it to you live all week. The doors are open, and the LA Convention Center is packed. Yep. That's right. It's not just press conferences today, baby. Oh, I love the conferences. No. But you want consoles? Don't worry, we've got them. They're all here, and they're showing off their newest nuggets of next-gen goodness. I'm talking PlayStation <laughs> 3, Nintendo Wii, and Xbox 360. Just be sure to chew 32 times, preferably, before you swallow. All right, Good and don't forget about the games. It seems like every developer in the world is at this party, and they've brought their latest and greatest titles with them. If you can play it, it's here, and if they created it, we'll be talking to them. That's right, and since E3 is a private industry event, G4 is the only way you're going to see absolutely everything. Don't worry, we've got your all-access pass right here. That's right, and we'll be here as the events unfold all week long, providing you with the insider information so exclusive that even Bill Gates himself doesn't know about it. That's true. Because we're like this, and he didn't know. He tried to pay me yeah. the bills money. No good here. No good. No good. So Classy pry man. those eyeballs open with a crowbar because you don't want to miss any of this. And E3 wouldn't be complete without G4's very own gaming yogis from X Play, Adam and Morgan. Seriously, these guys have a, a combined video game knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's so vast that it it makes mine look merely superhuman. Yeah. Ah, well, thank you, Kevin. That must be why you wear that cape when you sleep, the superhuman. <laughs> anyway, I'm Adam Sessler, and I love the smell of E3 in the morning. It smells like, oh, what's the word? Merchandising. Well, I'm Morgan Webb, and I need to uh, stop you right there, because what? A, it's not the morning, and B, it sort of smells like 30-year-old virgins and 20-sided dice in here. Yeah, so do I. But just listen to what we have coming your way in today's show. Extreme close-ups of Metal Gear Solid 4, Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, and I don't know, Halo 3. Sure, you're going to buy them, but will they be any good? Over the next three hours, we will help you find out. And we're even going to be going hands-on with Prey, Madden NFL 07, and Gears of War. That's right, we'll be playing them here on this stage before your entertainment-starved eyes. Plus, there's going to be enough Morgan Minutes, booth babes, and celebrity guests to make your TiVo cry with joy. I am not an optimistic no. man. No, no, no. <laughs> but this show, it's going to be amazing. And there's so much going on today, we simply, we simply can't do it alone. No, we can't. No. I mean, I, I can't do anything alone, actually, like dress. We've got a Justice League, of, so Justice League of Friends. They're out there on the show floor. They're investigating. They're interviewing, and they're intimidating the developers into submission. So why don't we let them introduce themselves, starting with Zach Selwyn. That's right, Adam. I'm standing here at the Sony booth. And you want to know what's new? How about games for the PS3? Look behind me. We got stuff in different shapes, colors, sizes, and it's all coming up in just a few seconds. In the meantime, let's throw it to my girl, Kristen Holt. OK, Zach, I'm here at Nintendo's booth in the West Hall. Crazy. I've got the scoop on how the Wii franchise games are going to work with the new controller. But for now, let's check in with Kevin and Olivia. Thanks, Kristen. All right, you've already heard a lot from us, but G4 also wants to know what you have to think. Seriously, they yeah. care, honestly. I You're care. gonna be seeing a lot of amazing stuff this hour, and we wanna hear what you have to say about it. All you have to do is log on to g4tv.com slash E3 and vote in our heat index, or you can text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898 to vote, and register for E3 live news alerts. Now we're gonna be checking the results every hour to find what gets you tingling, besides the, uh, the ringworm. We'll even be reading your comments live on the air, so be sure to indent your paragraphs and use topic sentences. It's just proper grammar. It's it polite. Is. Now, you know, I once read on a bumper sticker that you don't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. Ooh. 
Serious words then. With that in mind, let's take a look at all the action that unfolded in yesterday's installment of E306 Live and all the big news that's coming up today. The show floor is open. E3 has officially begun. The hallowed and very loud quarters of E3 are once again sending that siren call to every man, woman, and child who's ever felt the thrill of bashing an A button. This is the one and only place to see tomorrow's games today. Yesterday, we showed off the press conferences and enough exclusive footage to send you into an anaphylactic shock. You got the lowdown on the PlayStation 3, Nintendo's Wii, and Will Wright's Genesis Project, Spore. Two humans sent us a bullet-riddled Valentine, and Gears of War made a giant boom. But today is the day of days, and what do we want? The hair of the dog that bit us, that's what. Halo 3. Master Chief gets a promotion into the ranks of the next console generation. I know some extraterrestrials out there that are in big, big trouble. The big man hits next gen. Madden NFL 2007 takes the field. And if anyone could kill a man with the PS3's eight processor cell chip, it's Solid Snake. That's right, Metal Gear Solid 4 breaks its vow of silence. We get a look at who is the hunter and who is the hunted with prey. Sam Fisher has been training for this day his whole life. Splinter Cell Double Agent is finally out of the shadows. And it isn't a Nintendo console without an appearance from the godfather of gaming, Mario. We'll get to see what he's up to on the Wii. E306 Live is here. Come on in and leave your sanity at the door. All right, our first extreme close-up of the day is quite possibly yes. the most anticipated game of this show. Grown men will be giddy like pansy pants schoolgirls at the mere mention of this title. That's right, Xbox 360 owners, prepare to be dazzled because we've got an extreme close-up of Halo 3. Yes, Master Chief has returned. And he's looking sharper than ever in Halo 3 for the Xbox 360. The just released trailer lays out your agenda. Finish the fight with the evil alien overlords who are hell-bent on wiping out humanity. If you haven't already finished Halo 2, and we don't know why you wouldn't have, it's only five hours long, you know that it ends with a huge cliffhanger. When we last saw Master Chief, he was stowing away on an alien vessel that's out to destroy Earth. And all indications are that the much-anticipated sequel picks up from there. I know you. Your past. Your future. Believe me, I already know my future. It involves me glued to my chair while I spend hours and hours playing Halo 3. The footage looked incredibly crisp. If this is what Master Chief is going to actually look like on the 360, sign us up for the Space Marines. This is the way the world ends. I never thought I'd say this, but I can't wait for the world to end. We'll find out more when Halo 3 hits the Xbox 360 in 2007. You know, I just love those mysterious future voices. This oh, yeah. is the way the world ends. Apparently, uh, British women will be computers in the future. That's, that's right. what every movie's told me. OK, you know, when, when I said, if it's going to look like this, I think that's the thing. That looks so awesome. But because it's really a trailer, it doesn't exactly you know, prove to me, like, OK, will it actually look that, like that when I'm in the you first person know. playing the game? <clears throat> yeah. Exactly, kind of like, like similar to the kill zone thing. So yes, send me an actual demo of the game, please. And if it does have graphics like that, it's going to seem a lot classier when I go into a rumble pit with a bunch of 14-year-olds yelling obscenities at each other. And uh, speaking of poorly checked aggression, let's check in with Kevin and Olivia. Oh, come on, our aggression's checked. I, I haven't punched you in weeks. Sorry. The I'm, bruise is still there, I'm, Kevin. I'm sorry. I'm, my emotional scarring hasn't healed. Sorry, let's just talk to the kids at home. Let's just move on, people. Let's, let's do it. All right, Halo 3 might be capturing the hearts and minds of the people right now, but there are other great games to look out for. This is true, and yeah. some of them can only be played on the next-gen console that's actually more expensive than a 12-pack of mink condoms. How would you know? I've purchased many. The PlayStation 3, of course. Yes, Zach Selwyn is at the Sony booth with more. <laughs> I'm here at the Sony booth. Is everyone around me excited right now? What if World War II never happened? What if the planet was overrun by aliens? No, no, it's not the Anne Heche story. It's Resistance, Fall of Man. This first-person shooter has guns. Lots of guns. More guns than DMX's grandma. And that's a lot of guns. 
In Warhawk, you can do just what the great John Denver only dreamed of doing. Successfully fly a plane over the wonderful countryside we all take pride in. And you shoot things. Now that's a Rocky Mountain High. There are legends and there are untold legends. But let's talk about them anyway. With Untold Legends Dark Kingdom, you get the fighting, the story, and the man. This game is fully interactive. What does that mean? It means you can hit anything and anyone, making supermodels everywhere extremely jealous. Well, that's just a taste, a sliver of the PS3-ness. We're gonna bring you a whole lot more as the week goes on. In the meantime, let's go back to the stage. And we'll be checking back with Zach later for all the Sony news that you can cram into your little brain, and then it's gonna spell out your nose some, I'm sorry. <laughs> when we hear about a new PS3 game, you're gonna hear about it too, don't worry. All right, there's lots more E306 live on the way. She's not lying. Stick not. around or I will personally go to your house and break every console you own. Except the, the Neo Geo, because I really, really like that one. Coming up, get an exclusive peek at the hot new title from gaming legend John Carmack. And next, get medieval with Richard Garriott's Tabla Rasa. Now, if this show were a video game, we'd barely have pressed start. Which is particularly impressive, considering we already gazed upon the splendor that is Halo 3. Right? But hey, it's all in a day's work at G4, and that's why we're here to bring it to you first. Yes, now let's check in with the mighty EA Games, developers of nearly, you know, every game you've ever heard of. But after a slightly disappointing performance last year, they really need to make some magic here at E3. Well, you know, with titles like Spore, Crisis, and Madden NFL 07 on the roster, it looks like they may have done just that. Let's go to Olivia with more. As you can tell, I'm right here in the middle of all of the action on the E3 floor. It should be no surprise that EA has brought out the big guns with some very exciting games. Let's check them out. First up is what most consider the standard in football video games, Madden NFL 2007. But not only does the cover shot inspire awe, it also inspires fear because of the curse. This year's cover boy is NFL MVP Sean Alexander, whose presence in the title also signifies an improved running game in Madden. Let's just hope he looks both ways before he crosses into the end zone. Next up is Spore, a title that Christian Wright is sure to love because it gives gamers a crack at intelligent design. Gamers will actually play God as they control billions of years of evolution right on their PCs. Last but certainly not least is Crisis. Set in the year 2019, Americans and Koreans will do battle in some of the most realistic warfare. Here it is, from football to fragging, EA has it covered. Now keep it here on G4 all week. We'll keep you updated on everything as it happens. We actually have Madden on our set in just yes. a few minutes. And yesterday we had Spore in Crisis. I have to say, exactly. Spore, easily one of the most original games ever made. People are very yes. excited about it. Everybody wants to play God, so, you know. <laughs> exactly. And Crisis, while, well, okay, it's kind of like Far Cry, yeah. the game is still an original property. This, this is a new thing for EA and a good thing, just too. Just because it's on a tropical island doesn't mean it's Far Cry. Yeah, and it looks better than I ever and hoped And you can to. shoot trees. Yes, we'll exactly. keep checking. We'll keep checking back with EA throughout E3 for more details. Now, why don't I turn things over to the host? I think it was a kid's sister. Oh. Here's Kevin Pereira. Oh, I miss it. He used to braid my hair those days. It's an honor, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome our first guest for the day, Lord British himself. He's been in the gaming business since the only thing he could really play was Pong, and now he's here to talk about his latest masterstroke, Tabula Rasa. We're about to get some FaceTime, everyone, with Richard Garriott. Known as Lord British, Richard Garriott has amazed the gaming world with his hit Ultima series full of wizards, knights, castles, and monsters. Originally sold in Ziploc bags, the first Ultima game was created for the Apple II and inspired sequel after sequel. Not content with fantasy games, Garriott brought the medieval world to life when he built his own castle, Britannia Manor, in Texas. The keep includes hidden passages, trapdoors, and even treasured artifacts. Now at NCSoft, 
Garriott is continuing his adventures in the near future sci-fi MMO, Tabula Rasa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here, Richard Garriott. How you doing, Richard? Uh, doing great. It's, Thanks uh, for coming on. So far, great early in the show, but having a great time. Of course, of course. It's first day here. Have you seen anything on the show floor that, that's stricken your fancy? It, well, you know, to be quite honest, I have only been in our booth other than the short journey to come down here. Of course. But uh, uh, I hear about a few good things well, going we, on. We thank you for coming down from the ivory tower to, to meddle with us peasants. <laughs> oh, wait, do you, does your castle have an ivory tower? or? Is uh, well, it does have towers. I have <laughs> observatories, actually, on top of my castles. You say that to anybody else, they might take that the wrong way. You're like, no, I've got towers, and I <laughs> yeah. have a moat. And I, I do. What yeah, do you fill indeed. your moat with? Is there? A, a no, there is water. I have actually uh, waterfalls and caves. You don't have fanboys patrolling it just for fun? Uh, no, I, I have had a few years ago a, a, a an intruder I actually had to defend my house against, but uh, it was only a one-time event. I love it. All right, let's get to the game. Of course, you're here to talk about Tabula Ross. Uh, which the bun's been in the oven for quite a while, Richard. I think it's... Uh, sure has. Is it, is it a little overbaked at this point? Is it, should I be worried? I've been wanting to play this game for like the last 23 years. Uh, no, well, it hasn't quite been that long, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, as you know, MMOs take a, a long time compared to most games anyway. Plus, uh, in the case of Tabula Rasa, we had a course correction about two years in was pretty substantial. Uh, and, and so uh, that now added what to the time. Did you, did you see, was there a fork in the road and you decided to pick one, or did a deer run out? Like, what happened oh, that well, caused no, the Well, no, in the case of Tabula Rasa, I mean, part of its name, Tabula Rasa, we tried to build a game that was not built on the foundation of any classical piece of fiction that most games are, are, are uh, plagiarized from. Right. And so uh, we want to do something very original. And of course, the more original you get, the more fraught with peril it is. And there were a few dead ends on that journey. Uh, but now, at this point in time, we're very close to the end. We're months from release, and, uh, and we're very confident we have a great game in hand. Now, you've got, it's kind of a futuristic MMO, but there's a, a shooter aspect to it. So what is this game? Is this a shooter? Is this a, a, a traditional MMO, or is it a, a it's, little mashup? It's somewhere in between, actually. Okay. But, uh, but, but fundamentally, it's an RPG in the sense of your character's attributes and the equipment you've collected absolutely determine your uh, general level of success. And it's not a shooter in the sense of it's an arc there's, it is not an arcade game. Right. It's not a fast uh, twitch whack-a-mole applet on a web page exactly. type game. But unlike most MMOs, in most MMOs, you uh, identify a target and then start staring at the interface to, you know, go fireball, fireball, you know, sword swing, sure. healing potion. Or you hit your macro and grab a Twinkie and start exactly. drinking your Mountain Dew. Which won't work on Tabula Rasa. Good. And Tabula Good Rasa, it's much more tactical thinking throughout your engagement. It's very fast-paced. You have a weapon on your one mouse button, an ability tied into your other mouse button, and you are looking through your targeting reticle at the opponents you're shooting at at the time. But to keep it from being an arcade game, we have what we call sticky targeting. So when I sweep past an opponent, <laughs> it sticks to that opponent, and I, it knows that that's what I mean to be... Uh, a, a, sure, a, a, you want to lock onto that, not the tree that's being drawn in the distance. It. Exactly. So now, that's why it's not a, truly a shooter in that sense. Now, now, are you hiding this? Is there some dice rolling going on under the hood of the game? Is Absolutely. this kind of like how auto assault? Are you guys sharing technology at all on this? Or? Uh, actually, strangely, uh, not, on the, not on the RPG sense, but actually in the fundamental 3D graphics side, yes. They, we're actually, both those products are built on... Uh, an internally developed uh, uh, 3D engine we call Palantir. We actually have another game in our Korean office being developed on that same technology. Uh, and uh, we think uh, it's uh, done a very, very good job for us. Now, I hate saying, uh, between, between saying we and saying wow, I'm kind of I'm, I'm done with the, with the W words, but <coughs> you can't say MMOs without saying wow, and of course, World of Warcraft. Sure. Have you, um, um, have you played it? Oh, have yeah. you checked it out? I mean, they, oh, yeah. are, they, are they your competition, or are you going for a different market that hasn't touched the World of Warcraft? Uh, well, the, first of all, there's a great game. I actually sure. do play it myself, and I, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, but uh, I, I actually don't think, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on if this works or not, uh, I actually don't think any of the current MMOs in development are already out are really a direct competitor with, with uh, Tabula Rasa. We believe we're going to attract broadly MMO gamers sure. and broadly uh, you know, tactical multiplayer shooters into this hybrid. And but, you've uh, eliminated some of the, uh, the the mundane from the MMO, and that's the one thing that has me most excited for you, that you figured out it's not about the grinding and, and long travel times, it's about having fun and actually playing a game. It, it, yeah, exactly, we, we believe very strongly in uh, you know 30 minute play cycles, get in, find your friend quickly, not march across the world to get each other, get playing a mission which should be very succinct, 30 minutes maximum. Uh, and we also believe in, uh, uh, if you think about most MMOs, your life on average is pretty average. Sure. You know, you're grinding for levels and half people are higher, half people are lower, and only the narrow bandwidth of people near your level are, are fun to play with or capable of even playing with right. you. We do a game that's much more like a solo player game, like a traditional old school Ultima, uh, where you get to play with your friends. And so we have lots of instant spaces that are very custom to do storytelling to where, and puzzle solving where it feels, you feel more accomplished other than leveling. Well, Richard, you have the track record that lets me know I, it's going to be worth the wait, and I can't wait to play. Thanks for oh, coming on Absolutely, talk about my it. pleasure. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Invite me over to the castle sometime, seriously. Will do. Come on I can down. quell an uprising for you. Excellent. Everybody, I, I gotta be honest, I'm all talked out. So while I lube up the old vocal cords with a little uh, Jimmy Beam, let's check in on Adam and Morgan. 
I just want to warn everyone that there is a lot more E306 live on the way, so be prepared. You know, rotate yourself on a regular basis to, you know, avoid those bed sores. Right there. And eat some grapes, restore your electrolyte oh, balance, and good. get a cup to wee in. Wee hey. in. So, yeah, won't miss one second of the action. <laughs> Coming up, go behind enemy lines with the maker of Gears of War. Plus, get the lowdown on Madden NFL 07. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to E3 06 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. All right, everyone, we've already given you so much exclusive access today. But I'm expecting some thank you cards in the mail. Oh, remember, uh, stamps cost 39 cents now. And uh, while you're at it, send Morgan a card, too. You'll definitely want to after this. Morgan? Thanks, Olivia. Now, when I think of football video games, you know, one name comes to mind. Secretary of Transportation, Norman Mineta. I know, it's a long story, but you probably think of John Madden. Maybe that's because his are the only NFL licensed games on the market, or maybe it's because he's made couch quarterbacks out of every man, woman, and frat boy with a console and a dream. So now we're going hands-on with Madden NFL 07, presented by Scion. <laughs> Dale Jackson, executive producer, is here to give us the demo, and lead producer David Ortiz is playing the game. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thank you so much for coming in. Now, there is a lot new in Madden for the 360, which is actually what we're playing now and people are seeing, so tell me a little bit about what's new. Well, this year we've put a big emphasis on the running game. Okay. We're working on, uh, we've done everything from tuning the interior block and to open up the running game to just changing the moves that everybody can do. But one of the biggest additions that we have this year is the lead blocking control. Okay. And what Dave's going to be demoing here is uh, he's going to take control of a different player before the play, either a fullback or the tackle or a wide receiver, and he's going to run a block for the running back so that he can free the guy to run the daylight on the outside. Very nice. So is this going to be You can see Dave get a big cut block there that opened the guy up to make the big run on the outside. Because the computer sometimes wasn't the best blocker. The computer in, wasn't. In the past. And you want the user to be in control of as much po as possible in the game so they're not frustrated by the computer didn't make that block for me. You know, I followed right. my block but it didn't do what I wanted. So now they're completely in control of that. Right. So this is what the 17th version of, uh, of Madden? Yeah. Okay. So you got some, some, some other new features in this year? We have a lot of new features okay. in this year. <laughs> we'll, be we'll show you some of those. Some other things about the running game and some of the key visuals that you're seeing there. Um, we have new 3D grass in this year. The lighting's all been redone. We've redone the player models. The jerseys are more realistic than ever before uh, with some of the shading we've done on them. Um, but the running game, we've also gone and uh, have 20 different running back animations. So okay. we can exactly match some of the running back styles from around the NFL. So, so you'll and see that's player specific or does that have Absolutely. to do with their size? Or? It's player specific and you'll see like Tiki Barber who carries okay. the ball high and tight against his chest. You'll see him running with the ball like that. You'll see okay. Jamal Lewis who has an upright running style. You'll see him running like that in the game. So you'll really see the differentiation in the backs. We also have added a lot of ratings to really differentiate those backs and pick what style they'll use. And when you use the highlight stick, which was a hit stick last year, you can okay. get moves that are specific to all the different players throughout the game. So, so instead so of getting a big hit. guy is not going to be able to just do as much of a hit as a bigger guy. Exactly. Okay. He, wouldn't, he would actually try to slip the tackle rather than doing a hit because Warwick Dunn's never going to lower his shoulder and try to run over someone. He's going to try to slip the tackle and spin around and get out of there. So, so the grass wasn't 3D before? No, the grass was okay. uh, just a plane before. It looked really good, but now I think we've just taken it to an all-new level. It's just beautiful this year. Okay, well, let's talk about the training camp. Okay, well, um, um, we, we've added uh, the mini camp back into the game this year. Okay. And one thing we've tried to do with NextGen is uh, take everything we do and do it in a, a new way. So it's not just getting features from the current gen versions. Uh, it's taking these features and integrating them throughout the game. So um, Dave's going to show the 40-yard dash and the bench press. Okay. And what these are used for is the users will use them to create their players in the game, and they'll use them to grow their players throughout the year. So as, as you're playing the games, you can choose to go um, do these drills to progress your player's speed and their stamina and their strength throughout the year to grow your players. And, he, and he's gaining stamina in his uh, index fingers right now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, which, is, which is what gamers, gamers need the most. And just like in real life, Dave just ran a 4 6, 6 40, so. <laughs> Now, I do need to ask, you know, people, a lot of people are asking why the next generation Maddens don't have as many features as the Maddens on the previous consoles. I think that might be a question from last year, but I don't think that's going to be a question this year once they hear all okay. the stuff we have. So we're just releasing little bits at a time, but I think this year they're going to see the, this being one of the deepest Maddens ever. Right. So uh, you can't just port it over? Does uh, it, no, it doesn't work just, like that? Well, you can't just port it over. If we did, we'd be doing a, a disservice to the franchise. We have to beat yeah. ourselves every year, and we can't make the same game and beat ourselves. Game reviewers think it's all so easy. We're like, just port <laughs> it. What, you can't just port it? No? <laughs> that doesn't work? Well, watching all that football was 
close enough to exercise and I, I'm a little winded now. Whew. So I'm gonna breathe deeply and reminisce about old knee injuries while you watch Adam and Kevin. You mean old knee injuries? I, I always have them. I'm sorry I gave them to you. I just really needed to try out that new crowbar. Stop bar. using the... <laughs> it's oh, so right, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Morgan. Appreciate it. Now, if you're enjoying this fine programming and wondering how you can indulge in even more video game TV, I have the answer, Adam. You do? Yes. Really? There is the video game mashup. It's TV's only daily block dedicated to all things pixelated and playable. Yes, now the heart of the mashup is a show, oh, I might know something about. It's called, uh, what's Iron it called? Chill? X Play. Oh, yes. X Play. X Play. Kevin. Yes, it's where Morgan Webb and I play and review every game we get our hands on. The mashup is three. Three full hours of cheats, tips, tricks, and our brutally honest game reviews. You are brutal. Don't miss X Play and the rest of the mashup weekdays from 4 to 7. That's the PM, folks, right here on G4. Now, out here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. you know, people like to talk on the phone while they drive, which always reminds me of what I like to do when I drive. <laughs> Shoot those people. Good call. Now, before Kevin has the chance to commit a felony, let's take a look at Eight Days, the combination third-person shooter and driving game that Sony gave us a brief glimpse of at their media event. Here is the exclusive premiere. Now let's see some gameplay. Well, it's about time oh. to watch some commercials, which is an excellent way to learn about things that are for sale. Yeah, but after that, there's lots more E306 Live, so there's really no use in pretending you've got something better to do. Seriously, we've, we've read your blog. Uh, yeah, and I can't read. Coming up, you get the latest info on the 360 from Microsoft's Peter Moore, and catch up on the newest installment of Splinter Cell. Stay tuned. It worked for Hulk Hogan, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, there are no Hulkamaniacs back there. All right, everybody, welcome back to the rich, creamy taste mm. of E306 Live. Mm. Presented by Sound and Mountain Dew, mm. I am Kevin Pereira. And I'm Morgan Webb. And you know, E3 is about a lot of things. It's about marketing, it's about promotion, it's about avoiding eye contact. But really, really, it's all about you. Yes, avoiding eye contact yes. with you. Yes. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, wait, isn't it all about video games, though? No, no. It's about you. That's why we at G4 want to know what's on your mind. Simply direct your local internet machine towards g4tv.com slash e3 and vote in the heat index. Just tell us what you're most excited about at E3 this year, and we might even read your comments on the air, so make with the sassy. Yeah, yeah. Except that guy on the cell phone in the background waving. He, we don't care what he no. has to say. And if you enjoy typing on your cell phone, text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. Yes, yeah, so dislodge your jaws and prepare to swallow some more E3 info because it's time for the feed. Hello, Yanks. I'm Layla Cayley with all the news you need to know. Or as we say in our blighty, it's time for the feed. In today's top story, how much do you love Guitar Hero? Well, so does Activision. The publishers of the Tony Hawk series have announced plans to acquire Guitar Hero developer Red Octane. Activision's Ron Dornick says, quote, the online capabilities of the next generation platforms offer new opportunities to create additional revenue from downloadable music. But Ron, dude, it's all about rock and roll, baby. 
Now add this to your list of reasons to live in Japan, right behind panty bending machines. I have one at home. Yes, I do. The publishers of Gran Turismo will select 5,000 Japan-based gamers to participate in an online beta of GT4. The publishers hope to refine the online gameplay, which they say will be a big part of the Gran Turismo high-def experience on the PS3. Qualifying gamers can apply for the beta through May 19th, so get your boots on and get to kick in. And finally, in PC gaming news, Microsoft has announced a brace of new titles for their Vista operating system. Namco Bandai's Hellgate London, that's my city, baby. Sorry, I'm kind of weird today. Crisis from Electronic Arts, THQ's Company of Heroes, and Microsoft's own Shadowrun will be all available in January of 2007. That's it for now. Keep it tuned to G4 for breaking news throughout the day and visit us on the web at g4tv.com. Until next time, I'm Layla Cayley, and you've been fed, matey. I love her so much. Now, if there was a law against releasing great games, Ubisoft would be fashioning a shiv out of a bedpost tomorrow. Now, they are pimping an impressive stable of fillies at this year's E3, and with titles like Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell Double Agent, their pimp hand will be strong. That's right. why our own Adam Sessler decided to stretch his legs and visit the Ubisoft booth for himself. Uh, for more info, why don't we go to Adam? <laughs> It is always a pleasure to be in the Ubisoft booth. Consistently in E3, they have the most impressive and easily the most varied games on the show floor. It's the same this year. There are some great faces returning, like Rayman. Now he's going to be on the Wii, and yes, I am personally very excited. That is not all that they have on board. By now, you've heard about Red Steel. This is the adult first-person shooter for the Wii that takes full advantage of the motion sensitivity to the point that you also use a sword like that. I played it, trust me, it works. All I want to know now is, can you do the sword fighting online? Capturing the PS3 buzz is Assassin's Creed. The action here takes place in the Third Crusade. It's coming to you from the Prince of Persia team, and while it shares in the acrobatics, it's got a lot more blood. If you want to play a World War II game, it's good to go with the action strategy combo of Brothers in Arms. This new title is Hell's Highway, which is a recreation of the battle for Hell's Highway. Sorry if I'm spoiling something, but the Americans win. Not surprising, but still exciting, Sam Fisher is back in Splinter Cell Double Agent. The game is different this time. It's taking a much darker turn, where you have to make some very serious moral decisions that will affect the outcome of the game. I don't know, we can think of it as a badass with attitude. All right, so they didn't tell me about a sequel to Beyond Good and Evil, but I got to say, this is still one impressive lineup from Ubisoft. They haven't failed me. So, à la prochaine. The Ubisoft is very impressive. They have something for every console. They've got all their bases covered, but hello, yeah. online sword fighting. That's awesome. I'm down. Frat boys can finally sword fight in the virtual world. Right. Attention, Tom Clancy fans. If you want to know where Sam Fisher has been or what he's been up to lately, tomorrow we're going to go hands-on with Splinter Cell Double Agent. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but E3 has actually been around for a really long time. And if you've been watching our ongoing PBS quality documentary series on the history of E3, you'd already know that. I'm your straight shooter, Kevin Pereira. And I'm your go-to guy, Adam Sessler. We're here at 1944's E3 convention here in the clean, predominantly Caucasian city of Los Angeles. Yes, the air is clear. The trollers are running at full capacity. And all the latest entertainment technology is on display today. From shutting up your kids to shutting up your wife, there's something here for everyone. Let's go to our gal Friday, Morgan Webb, who's on the floor right now. Thanks, Adam. There's a lot of new games here, utilizing the greatest wonders of American engineering and go get them know-how. Everyone's talking about Ration Manager 45, but the real innovation here is mobile gaming. Mobile? On the go? We're talking telephone-based entertainment. Works like this. You dial up the operator and you have yourself a joke. Operator, operator, can you tell me how many miles it is to San Francisco? <laughs> And you can play that game from any telephone, Adam. Sounds swell, Morgan. But what, in your opinion, is the best thing you've seen on the floor this year? Well, that's a cinch. It's the kraut pound and space-age plastic fun of Hungry Hungry Hitler. Thanks, doll. Since she's whip smart and sharp as a tag with a pair of games to die for, we gave Morgan Webb another round on the show floor. She's back to tell us about the newest gaming tech. What's the talk of the town, dame? 
people can't get enough of Rosie the Riveter, and now there's a take-home version. You can enjoy nailing metal into metal in the privacy of your own den. This one's for our boys abroad. Thanks for that report, Morgan. This portion of E344 is brought to you by 22 Mule Team Borax. Nothing gets your toughest stains out like 22 Mule Team, the Borax, with bite. That, that's what I look like in my spare time. Of course. Yes, now earlier today, a very special guest dropped by the stage. That's right, it was G4's newest late night player, Ed the Sock, and yeah. our very own Olivia Munn had the chance to catch up with him. Thanks, guys. Weeknights at midnight just got a little darker. With Midnight Spank, the new late night block here on G4. One of the new shows premiering tonight is Ed the Sock's Night Party. Lewd, crude, and unbearably funny, Ed the Sock pushes the moral barricades to the breaking point. Joining us now is Ed the Sock himself and co star Leanna Kay. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Ed, how are you, Leanna? You guys uh, just flew in from Canada and came okay. straight to E3. Ed, uh, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, 100,000 gamers squinting at daylight. <laughs> now, you guys are huge Canadian superstars. Are you guys afraid you're going to get mobbed here? I'm not afraid. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah well, she's looks... a redhead. She likes being surrounded by a lot of guys. Hey. Well, now, speaking of your show, uh, this is the first time U.S. viewers are going to get a chance to see it. Can you guys tell me a little bit about what your show's about? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's late night comedy, but not late night comedy like you're used to in, in the States. It's a little more edgy, it's, it's a little more adult. We've got uh, dancing girls, and we've got a hot tub with some beautiful women in it. <laughs> and of course, uh, we've got uh, Leanna, the leading lady of late night. And so that's our program, in a nutshell. Well, it sounds extremely interesting. Yeah, it sounds like you really believe that. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, I just wanted to welcome you guys to the G4 family. Oh, this Thank is you. a family? Yeah. Yes, this is a family, and oh. I'm sure Ed will take no time Does in showing you. Does that mean you're like my sister? Because then the thoughts we... I've been having are like Luke and Leia in the original Star Wars. Something's just odd about it. Hmm. All right, everyone, don't forget to watch Midnight Spank tonight. Starting at midnight, it's the premiere of the always classy Cheaters, followed by Ed the Sock's Night Party. That's Midnight Spank every weeknight at midnight right here on G4. All right, thanks, Olivia, and of course, Ed the Sock. You gotta thank the Sock. Now, that was uh, one witty piece of hosiery. Now, don't touch that dial because E306 Live will be back faster than Brett Ratner can ruin the X-Men movie franchise. Oh. Later on, learn about role-playing from the maker of Black and White. Then, keep up with the Wii on the Nintendo Floor Report as E306 Live continues. Six Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew, and I, I know, I'm Adam Sessler. You're Adam Sessler? Yeah, I know, Big I just fan. found out. Big oh, fan, cool. great. And you're yeah. Olivia Munn. I am Olivia Munn. Great. Yes. It works out well. It does. The Nintendo Wii, or the artist formerly known as The Revolution, made a big splash yesterday at E3, but I think it still has a few secrets left under the hood. Well, then let's just check in with Christian Holt to see if she can make Nintendo spill their beans. What have you got for us, Christian? <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm here at the gigantic Nintendo booth. I'm going to check out this new Wii system. I'm one of the first people that gets to see this bad boy. I'm here to find out if playing really does equal believing. First up is Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. This game totally redefines how first-person shooters are played on consoles. You use the remote to direct the arm cannon at the baddie that you want to go bye-bye. The game also uses the nunchuck attachment to activate Samus's gear, like the Morph Ball and Grapple Beam. Next up is Mario in space! In Galaxy, you once again jump into the oversized overalls of Mario. Since he's in space, Mario can perform some of his biggest jumps ever. Look to be playing Super Mario Galaxy on your Wii system soon. Taking the slot of System Seller is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. The game has you leading the young farm boy Link through the vast lands of Hyrule. The Wii version of the game makes use of the remote to aim projectiles, perform special sword attacks, and even fish. Well, Nintendo has answered all of our prayers by showing their franchise players on the Wii. I have to say, they've definitely made a believer out of me. How about you guys? Oh, 
since this is G4, you know we'll have more exclusive info on the Wii and all the brand new games for it later in the show. Hey, Kev, what's going on with you? I'm just standing across the stage. You know, in some countries, people are killed, actually killed, for expressing their beliefs or even for over-feathering their hair. But I am proud, very proud, to live in a land that gives respected TV co-hostesses an opportunity to voice their opinions. That's right, the females, too. Please enjoy another edition of the Morgan Minute. Why don't you start the clock? So everybody here, NCSoft, Sega, the smaller third parties, I know there's like a hundred of you guys. Now just fill in, I, I have a surprise for you. This is an intervention. You need to stop. Please stop. Stop making massively multiplayer games. I just don't think I can take it. After a full 40 hour a week job and maybe what, eight hours a day to sleep and practice my kickboxing, I've got like what, 20 hours a week? <laughs> and there are a lot of MMOs. Lord of the Rings, Conan, Star Trek, Hello Kitty, Stargate. An MMO based on a 15 year old movie about an alien tranny means something is very, very, very wrong. And one person can only take on what, one or two MMOs at once before completely losing touch with reality? It's a scientific fact. They tested it on mice. Thought I missed that mouse skill. In conclusion, MMOs are fun, but this is overkill. You need to stop following trends and start making some. Yeah, gotta listen to me about that. It's been a minute, and I've been Morgan. All right, thanks, Morgan. Everybody, don't go anywhere, because there's lots more E306 Live coming up next, now with 50% more live. Find out what the creator of Doom has in store. Then see what your fellow gamers have to say in the latest heat index. Don't go away. Welcome back to E306 Live presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. We've gone through an entire hour here and I can't wait to see what you guys liked best, the electronics, the entertainment, or the exposition. Ooh. So let's find out what you guys all thought in our heat index. That's right. First up is the PlayStation 3 lineup, which boasted a Heavenly Sword, Ridge Racer 7, and Resistance, Fall of Man. No surprise here, you said it was Volcanic. Oh, yes, yeah, so especially because of Ridge Racer. Because <laughs> it's a big surprise it being at a PS3 High death launch. Drifting. Yeah. Come yeah, on I, now. I think they thought the uh, Heavenly Sword chick was Volcanic. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She, she got me heated up a little bit. Yeah, bit. yeah, she's cute. I'm excited. Yeah, okay. And we also got some FaceTime with Richard Garriott. He showed off his newest game, Tabula Rasa, which you rated as hot, 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 baby. You know, this one I'm actually really excited for. You know, I think I think it Why might have cooled off nice? because of the anticipation. You know, it's right. like you, you, it was hot and when it was volcanic when it was first announced, but now people have sort of forgot about it. I think in the wake of other massively multiplayer games. It's, it's going to come up again. I think when it's closer to being released, people are going to get very excited about sure. it. Yes. We also may be suffering some fatigue for the MMOs out there, as Morgan so kindly yes, put it. That's yes, that's true. All right, we also went hands on with the mighty Madden NFL 07, which scored a touchdown with your rating of volcanic. Wow. Look at that. I actually my. I was out there doing the EA thing earlier. It was, it was, it's like no other other Madden out there. And, and it, has, it has 3D graphs, and yes. that really, that really brings uh, the level of Madden up a little well, bit, no, as, they, definitely as they told because me. If there's that one grass blade, if it's a little bit too tough, oops, yeah, you know, you're yeah. on your bum. Because yep. the shorter grass actually makes you faster, but the guy they have on the cover is actually known for being so fast, so it's kind of a weird mm. little yes. thing. Yeah. All right, well, I just want to know what the new features are in this, in this yeah. Madden. All right, and here's what Dwojo14 said about the new PS3. It's it, The new PS3 is awesome to me. All these new games look so cool. Now they just need to release the, new, the system and demos. Yeah. Oh, that's, demos. that's all they have to do yeah. is just, just get it out there. I want to have a system and free stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What's the free stuff? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you didn't like the results of the heat index, then don't just sit there sulking at the baby. Get up and do something about it. Get over to g4tv.com slash e3 and vote for what's coming up in the next hour. Or, as always, you can text e3 at g4txt. That's 44898 to vote. And register for e3 live news alerts. Now, there is so much more e306 live coming your way after the break. And don't worry, we'll still be here when you get back. Yes, you can worry as long as you keep watching. Just worry about general interest exactly. subjects. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like getting rid of unsightly or unwanted hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or the trade gap with China. Exactly. Whoa, now I'm worried. Coming up on E306 Live, catch up with gaming legend Cliffy B as our coverage continues.
Six Live presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I'm Olivia Munn. Oddly enough, I'm Kevin Pereira. And during the break, I actually walked around the convention floor literally for like five minutes. You wouldn't believe how many free t-shirts I got. Two. No, no, not even close. Um, seven. No, I got like 24 shirts. Oh Yeah, my. seriously. And they're all, they're all like double XL, so I can use them as bed sheets tonight. I'm in luck. No room over rubber. <laughs> okay, I think we just better... Tell everyone about the all-new Attack of the Show. Yes, move on from new that. Attack of the Show. That's yes. right. Very important. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Starting this Monday, things are going to look a little different. In fact, a little bit. Look, see these guys behind me here? These little mm -hmm. TV guys? These are, uh, these are on the set. Yes. They've got monitors for heads, and they're dressed nicer than I am, which is uh, phenomenal. <laughs> you like the TV heads? Anybody? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those guys have no idea what I just asked them. They don't even speak English. Anyway, we got a new cool, set. Though. They are yeah. awesome. Look better than most guys I date. They're going to be on there. Uh, we yeah. got some new faces. Oh, but we're keeping the same attitude. I hope that's, that's all right. That's right. Uh, you know, can it see it any other way? No. Oh. It's the tag of the show. All and, right. And Go coming ahead. up this year, AOTS breaks out with week-long road trips. In July, we're going to crash these superhero conventions with Comic-Con Live. And in August, we'll head to Sin City. That's right, Las Vegas for a week of the sights and the sounds that only Attack of the Show can bring you. And in September, we're off to Tokyo Nippon, the place that seems to be defining what's next, including animation, gadgets, and video games. It all starts on Monday. Be there with an all-new Attack of the Show right here at 7 p.m. All righty, well, we've made it through the first hour. I yes. think we're all here. Are we all here? Yes, yes, we are. Okay, but there's still a metaphorical boatload of exclusive E3 coverage, and it's ready to come your way. That was a very nice metaphor. It was, yes, wasn't it? indeed. Loyal television minions will teach you about the 70s. They were a long time ago with their exclusive first look at Dirty Harry. Plus, Gears of War is ready to invade your, your Xbox 360. Now, funny, you should mention the 360, funny. Morgan. Later <laughs> in the show, we'll get some FaceTime with the man behind the console, Microsoft's Peter Moore. Yeah, see, the people at home probably think that's enough show. Well, the people at home are naive. I know. Now that we have the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, it's also on the show floor, and we are going to give you an exclusive look. It's all in hour two, and that starts right... Wait a second. When? No, when? wait a second. Right now. Oh. Get ready for the hottest new titles coming out for the Xbox 360, including Cliffy B's epic new shooter, Gears of War. Then Microsoft Peter Moore stops by for a chat. And of course, we keep you up to speed on what the booth babes are wearing. Or not wearing. G4 and Attack of the Show present E306 Live. Big deal, yeah, one down. We are back, yeah. and it's hour two of day two of E306 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I'm still Kevin Ferreira. And uh, oddly enough, I'm still Olivia Munn. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, the convention center is packed. That's right, as it should be. This is the biggest video game event of the year, and G4 is bringing it to you like no one else can. We are your all-access pass to everything E3, new games, new consoles, uncharted levels of hype. My hair... It's all here. Yes, we'll have exclusive first looks at the titles that you're going to be waiting in line for later this year. Oh, and don't forget about the consoles. We've got the inside story on the ones that the Stork just brought into our precious little world, like the PlayStation 3, a little something called the Wii, it's Nintendo, and the Xbox 360. They all have their father's eyes and their mother's intuitive controls. <laughs> All right, plus we'll get some FaceTime with the gaming legends who make all of this possible. If you only watch one electronic entertainment exposition this year, you'd better make sure it is this one. Sage advice, sage advice, Olivia. And now to tell us a little bit more about the almost unbearable amount of cool crap coming your way today are Adam and Morgan, G4's gamers extraordinaire from X-Play. What have you guys got for us? Well, hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Adam Sessler, and yes. the ancient Greeks would refer to today's show as, what's that word in Greek? Mm. Humdinger. That's Humdinger. Beautiful. Greek oh, is, is a beautiful language. Yeah. Now, I'm Morgan Thomas. Webb, and my co-host speaks the truth, because coming up this hour, we'll be going hands-on, hands-on with Gears of War. This is the 360's big hope for a console-moving title this year. Plus, there's an extreme close-up of, get yeah, wait for it, Nintendo's <laughs> Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Yes, now let's check in with our agents on the E3 floor. Like ring race hunting for hobbits, their eyes are everywhere. Using a random number generator, I've decided to start with Zach Selwyn. Hey, thanks, Adam. As you can see, I got the worst job in town, hanging out with a couple of the ladies of E3. 
We'll be right back with a little interview with them. In the meantime, Kristen, what are you up to? Hey, Zach. Coming up from the Warner Brothers booth, we've got all the dirt on their new game, Dirty Harry. Stick around, it will blow you away. Let's go to the stage and check in with Kevin and Olivia. Great idea. Thanks, Kristen. We'll be yeah, seeing thanks. so much today that it'll be tough to really decide what I like best. All right, be then let's just leave it up to our viewers. Oh, okay. I guess that worked last hour, so let's <laughs> do it again. And I do enjoy letting other people do my work for me, so why not? I do your work for you all of the time. All right, all you guys have to do is log on to g4tv.com slash e3 and vote in our heat index. Just tell us what's on your mind, and if we like what you have to say, we might even read it on the air. Of course, you can also text e3 to g4txt, that's 44898, to vote and register for e3 Live News Alerts. In fact, what's coming up next is sure to get high marks in the heat index. That's right, yeah. volcanic perhaps. Volcanic. You've got to be talking about Legend of Zelda, mm -hmm. Twilight Princess, and okay. i got to be honest, it almost pains me a little bit right here, not so much here, but right here. Breathe. To give up the reins to Adam and Morgan for this one, but what choice do I have? The prompter says to do it, so take it away. <laughs> I'm so sorry to cause your pain, Kevin. Well, for years we've been waiting for another installment of the Legend of Zelda series. And we got a look at, it at last year's E3, but a look was not enough. Now, it's clear that Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess will fully integrate the Wii's new approach to gameplay. And here is our extreme close-up. already heard the news, Nintendo is releasing two different versions of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. One that plays on your boring old GameCube and one that runs on your brand spanking new Wii. So how do you show off your Wii specific features? Well, if you're Nintendo, you demonstrate the game live at your press conference. A quick jab with the Wii remote and linked as a shield shove, knocking your enemy silly. And there are a ton of gameplay elements you can experience with our slick gyroscopic controller. From hauling tail with your grappling hook, <laughs> to lining up your boomerang targets, or yes, even catching some fish. Just please don't make us play like this, Nintendo. What the hell is he doing? You can also use the remote-like controller to access your weapons and items at any time. Nintendo also revealed that the controller has a built-in speaker. So every time you shoot an arrow, you hear it as well as feel it in the palm of your hand. Same goes for the classic Zelda chime. Mm, that takes us back. We'll have the full story on The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess when it hits the GameCube and the Wii this November. Just please, for the love of Tingle, don't make us wait any longer, Nintendo. Please? And if you enjoy watching elf-like men in green tights save princesses, and who yeah. doesn't, you can check out g4tv.com slash e3 for more and more Zelda. And now let's go from Hyrule to Hollywood. It's Kevin Pereira and Olivia Munn. Thanks, guys. Up next, we have a floor report on the brand new Dirty Harry game. Dirty Harry, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I thought if they were going to make a game about Clint Eastwood, though, it was going to be uh, The Bridges of Madison County. Oh, that was your favorite book, wasn't it? One of it? my favorites. That's a great book. Okay, well, in the meantime, I guess we'll have to tide ourselves over with Detective Callahan. Here's Kristen Holt with the inside story. <laughs> The time has come to get the answer to that age-old question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Okay, that was a horrible impersonation, but we're coming to you from the Warner Brothers booth where they're about to break the news about their hot new game, Dirty Harry. Let's check it out. Harry Callahan and the Dirty Harry franchise are as popular and as vital today as ever, which makes them the perfect properties, in our view, for the next generation video game. Clint is back in the role he made famous as the Maverick Renegade cop, Detective Harry Callahan. Turn around, damn it! Ah! Players will have to get results just like he did, breaking all the rules and serving up justice Dirty Harry style, complete with the most powerful handgun in the world, the 44 Magnum. This is a story I would have done if I was 40 years old and doing Dirty Harry's. I'm very, very enthusiastic about this game and uh, the way they've gone after it and the approach they've had is, uh, is very exciting. Somebody call the police. And the police. 
So there you have it, Clint Eastwood, Bad Guys and Guns. I ask you what could be more fun than keeping the streets clean by being a little dirty. They also announced that Gene Hackman and Lawrence Fishburne are also on board to participate in the game as well. So keep watching because as we know more, you know more. Back to you guys. Not you bad. know, Kev, uh, yeah, they make a lot of video games into movies and movies into video games. Sure. Do you think they're ever as good as the original? You know, it's it's hard to say. I, and half the time, no, they're not, unfortunately. And, and people were really excited for, like, the Godfather game that just came out recently. Didn't do as well as expected. No. Scarface, the early buzz on the floor. The verdict still is out on this one. And I don't know that Dirty Harry really resonates, I think, with the gaming audience yeah. anymore. So it'll, it'll be very yeah. interesting. But my take on it is between the Warriors and this, I'm really sorry that I missed out on the 70s, because apparently you could get away with anything. Yeah, that uh, Ford administration must have been pretty awesome. That they were. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you want to see my Dirty Harry impression? Because No, I no, I'd actually rather hear about the Daily Nut. Okay, but, uh, you know, you're missing out. I bet, I bet. Just so you know. All right, if you want to make your day with the best of the Internet, it can be found online each and every day with G4's Daily Nut. We pour over the web to find all the best stuff, then we serve it straight up to you. Weird websites, fun new viral videos, the best, the Daily Nut is out there to find out everything that's happening on the net. Yeah, and you can only get it online, so just log on to G4TV.com or at iTunes, you can find it and download G4's Daily Nut. Now, as my good friend Tony Danza once said, who's the boss will be back in a moment. Stick around. Don't you mean E306 Live will be get back? Get a hands-on demo of the exciting new shooter, Prey. Then get an eyeful of the lovely booth babes as E306 Live continues. Look, it's like Miyamoto. Oh, yeah. Without the technology. Right. Welcome Legacy. back to E306 Live, presented by Cyan and Mountain Dew. I am Adam Sessler. Yeah. Now, the 360 launched in October of last year, giving it a head start on the rest of the next-gen consoles. Except that only very few of the games released for the 360 took real advantage of the hardware. Well, and I don't think any of us were planning to spend $400 on a console to just play Call of Duty 2 and Geometry Wars. Well, Microsoft is definitely trying to change that. And for more on this, tireless journalist Kevin Pereira, actually, it's um, Jeff Keighley. Is, it's, 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 Jeff Keighley, Keighley, yes, yes. He's going to talk to Peter Moore himself. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm here at the Microsoft booth checking out the incredible wave of first-party titles that's just waiting to drop. The energy is huge, the booth is giant, and the games, well, the games speak for themselves. Check it out. Master Chief is back, and as great as the real-time trailer looked, you'll have to keep holding your breath because he's not coming this year. But hopefully this eye candy is enough to keep the fanboys at bay. It looks like you'll have to keep plugging away at Halo 2 on the 360 to get your Halo fix. Gears of War is right around the corner. It's highly anticipated, and it just might be the cure for the common shooter. Gears of War was specifically designed with co-op play in mind and will utilize the Unreal Engine 3. It's going to make gamers drool even more than their enemies bleed in this action-packed, violent title. Although an official release date has not been set, we may see this rolling right out before Christmas. If that's not enough, I'll be back for a live hands-on with Gears of War a little later in the show. Another giant announcement at the Microsoft press conference on Tuesday was Forza Motorsport 2. The follow-up to the White Knuckle Motorsport title of 05. The trailer is slick, and this game is sure to be fast. Forza Motorsport 2 is likely to push the 360 to its limits. All right, that's all for now, Xbox fans. But fear not, I'll be back even later with more Xbox 360 goodness. Now, one of the biggest newsmakers of this year's E3 is the Xbox 360, and with the Microsoft man whose tattoos say it all is our own Jeff Keighley. Thank you, Morgan. Now, you know, when you think of Xbox, one name comes to mind, Master Chief. And if you think a little harder, though, you'll arrive at Peter Moore. He's the man at Microsoft who's in charge of the Xbox as well as their PC games. And here's some FaceTime with Peter Moore, fueled by Mountain Dew.
One of the key strategic minds behind the launch of the Xbox 360, Peter Moore has played a huge part in shaping video game history. Moore came to Microsoft from Sega, where he launched the legendary Dreamcast system and later served as president and chief operating officer of Sega of America. In this executive role, Moore led Sega's transition from a hardware manufacturer to a successful software publisher with such titles as Virtua Fighter, the light gun series House of the Dead, and the addictive Super Monkey Ball games. When Moore signed on with Microsoft, the company's next-gen console was still known by the codename Xenon. Three years later, Xbox 360 is a household name all over the gaming world. Peter Moore. Jeffrey. All right, sir, welcome to the hot seat. Always a pleasure. Now, Peter, you know, big news at the press conference about Halo 3. Uh -huh. uh, it's coming in 2007, so uh, what can you tell us about it? Bungie's hard at work on it? Uh, of course. It's uh, time to finish the fight, Jeff. That's what right. I can tell you about it. So is this the silver bullet against the PS3? Oh, no. No? No. I mean, if we were reliant upon us, as important as Halo is, obviously, but I don't think, I, I like to think that the platform is bigger than that. I think it's right. a combination, obviously. We talked a lot yesterday about Xbox Live, uh, and I don't want to dismiss the importance of Gears of War. I think we focus on this year, and I think you've shown on the show today right. what uh, the power of Gears of War and the personality of Cliffy B. No, I think it's just one of a number of things. Right, that so are you going to launch Gears right up against the PS3 on November 17th? Emergence Day will be uh, will be <laughs> when revealed soon. Well, right? Yeah, really. well, when Cliffy's in charge, he'll determine all Emergence right. Day. Well, let's talk about the emergence of the PS3 here. Uh, you know, you've been skeptical in the past of PS3 saying you know they're just showing videos. They showed up here with real gameplay. Um, but you know, last year I know the Killzone video they showed. Now, someone told me you actually you have that on your desktop, right, at Microsoft. Why do you keep it there? Well, I think that you look at things, and, and certainly when I, I emerged out of uh, E3 last year, there was a lot of criticism that Killzone looked better than anything we had to say. Right. Clearly, we were in a position last year where I felt we needed to show real games. We were running on alpha kits, and uh, I just can't wait to see the game and see what it comes out. And It's just a little thing that I have on my desktop, yes. <laughs> Do you think they're matching the, uh, the videos, what you've seen so far, of the games? My invite to the Sony booth hasn't arrived yet, so I'm waiting it's, it's for that. It's a free open booth. Oh, you it is? Okay, yeah. It's well, like we'll see how free it is when I walk in there. But, I'll walk you over. Uh, that'll be great. No, I, I, uh, from what I saw in the video last night of the press conference, I did see some stuff, and right. the stuff is looking okay. Yeah. The question I think gamers have to answer, is it looking demonstrably better than you can get on an Xbox 360 right. now. The one thing they do have in the PS3 is this Blu-ray drive that they're you know, really betting on with high-definition movie playback. Now, you have the HD DVD add-on that you're putting on for the 360. When I was talking to Sony, I mean, they're saying that, you know, this is a clear sign that the Xbox 360 wasn't future-proofed, that, you know, these guys cut corners to get ready for launch, and now they have to have an add-on drive, you know, a year after it first came out. What's your response? It's a games machine. Right. It's built to play high-definition games. If the gamer then chooses to be able to want to play High definition movies, we provide that gamer with the choice of right. the HD DVD external drive. Um, we believe that games are fundamental, that, right. that as well as Xbox Live being that communication to your friends is fundamental. Right. After that, high def movies, nice to have. Okay. Now, GTA 4, that was a big surprise announcement. Everyone, you had two tattoos, and everyone thought it was the Halo 3 tattoo. It was GTA 4. It's coming to Xbox 360 on day one. You pulled the exclusivity away from Sony. Tell us about how did that happen? How long, how many meetings did you have to have to make that happen, Peter? Guys at Rockstar are brilliant. They're yeah. geniuses. Um, when we look at the last generation, clearly, I think everybody would know that the, the power of the Grand Theft Auto franchise was a lot of what drove the install base of PlayStation 2. And obviously, it's important that we neutralize, if you will, the effect of that. We love the Grand Theft Auto franchise, and I think it's going to be important that the only place you can play Halo 3, Grand Theft Auto 4, and Gears of War is going to be on the Xbox 360 platform. Absolutely. Now, you know, last time when I talked to you last year, you said, give me a call, Jeff, on January 1st, 2008, and I'll be able to tell you who's going to win the console war. Now, you guys say you're going to ship, you know, 10 million Xbox oh, 360s yeah. before the PlayStation 3 comes out. Do you think, is, is the, the timeline accelerated there? Are you gonna, you gonna know well, earlier? Well, I still think that the first holiday, which would be next year, look, Sony's gonna be capacity constrained this right. holiday. There's no two ways about it. Nintendo will be in the same boat. The real battle begins, quite frankly, in the second holiday of when we're all, Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft in full supply, that a consumer can walk into a store and say, I want that one. I want right. that one because they've got great games. I want that one because the price is right. I that want that one because it's got a great online experience. Those are the choices that they're going to be making. We'll still get together on January 1st, 2008. <laughs> we'll have a toast and see if you win. All Absolutely. right, Peter. Well, it's great having you here on G4. Thanks for coming Jeff, by. Always a pleasure. Right, back Thank to you, you, Morgan. Thanks, Jeff. Now, there's lots more E306 Live coming at you after the break. Change the channel and you'll miss it, which would be bad for all parties involved. Coming up after the break, 
the action heats up as we get an exclusive demo of the incredible new shooter, Gears of War. You know, it occurs to me that E3 is really kind of like a burrito. You know, it's uh, wrapping up all that is right and good about games into a delicious tortilla made from stone ground hype. Well, if that's the case, then G4 is serving all that live exclusive access to you with a side of guacamole, queso, and a smile. That's right. Yes. You know, if I could choose one person to spend the next minute with, it'd, it'd have to be Morgan Webb. Sorry, me Olivia. Too. Hey. Let's get 60 seconds on the clock and bring you another Morgan Minute. is out and dragons are in. Watch it, fanboys. I see you over there sucking down the sweet nectar of the Final Fantasy VII spin-offs. Let me try to tempt you with some different fruit. Dragon Quest. A pair of games are just starting to ripen on the branch and one of them is worth plucking. Because it's plucking great. Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime for the DS focuses on one of the great icons of the series, the Blue Slime. Not since the Rosencrans and Guildenstern first-person angst has a spin-off for a supporting character been this good. As a little slime hero of your little and slightly demolished slime village, it's up to you to repair the slime shacks while raging war in your slime tank. The slime flies in real time in this little adventure. While it may lack all the big swords and emo boys of those other Final Fantasy games, this little ball of goo has some promise and a mucus trail. It's been a minute, and I've been Morgan. Thanks, Morgan. Now, booth babes are those wonderful persons willing to share their breasts with the entire expo-going world. Oh, God bless them. You know, many criticize them and say that they distract from the purpose of the event, but I mostly just try to get a clear mental picture of them so I can remember what they look like later. And, and what they smell like. That's kind of creepy, Kevin. Chamomile. Okay. Unfortunately, Zach Selwyn drew the short straw this year, and he got sent on a quest to find the hottest booth babe at E3. Hey, I'm down here on the floor at E3, and you know I've got the hardest job of the entire convention. I'm looking for the top 10 hottest booth babes, the top five who have revved my engines thus far. Will be posted online right now. Go to g4tv.com slash e3 and vote for who you think is the hottest booth babe of the day. Tomorrow we got five more, but here are the first day nominees. Check them out. Now can I ask you what character you represent in the game? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I'm supposed to be one of the characters in the game. Wow, they really did a lot of good training. What's your master's in? Business. So what, is, what do they call that? NBA? No, I don't play basketball. What other uh, games, what other places have we seen you? Not games, but more like magazine, like Playboy, or my website and stuff like that. I'm what's more... what's Playboy? No smelly guys? No smelly guys yet. What about me? How I smell tonight? Well, I mean, I, I think you're the first one that... Little little gamey. It's hard to, to be my character and, and want to be into the game, because, I mean, there's hot ass guys walking around. I mean, excuse me, but... Oh, please. No need to be excused, honey. I have seen some bodies here. All right, there you have it, my top five hotties of E3 so far. These two, real close. You guys are number six and number seven. You think next year you might dress a little skankier, let us uh, put you in the top five? She's a well-spoken one, isn't she? In the meantime, help me out. Vote for those girls online at g4tv.com slash E3. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. he gets the short mm -hmm. straw, yet I get Richard Garriott, and he gets the booth babes. I'm here. That's true. No? That is yes. true. Although I mean, Richard, Richard yeah. does look better in hot pants. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Can, come on, you can't. All right, you I'll can't give you. I'll, yeah, that's right, that's right. You know, he does work out the glutes. All right, <laughs> if you want to keep that funny feeling right down there, keep it locked on G4 for all your booth babe needs. We'll be checking in with them all week. Now, E306 Live never stops. However, it does periodically slow down to shed its exoskeleton. Oh, and also for commercials, so stay tuned. <laughs> Coming up, Peter Molyneux takes you inside the magical world of Fable. And of course, there's plenty of booth babes as E306 Live continues.
set in a Norse-based future universe, you play as Baldur, the cybernetic god. Our hero is fighting to save mankind from the war machines that are determined to wipe out all humans. In the first part of this planned trilogy, you navigate the world using melee and ranged weapon combat in both the single-player and four-player co-op online play. Now, if sci-fi future doesn't get you all excited, soon you can sink your teeth into Fable 2, the follow-up to Peter Molyneux's original title. Fable 2 was announced at Tuesday's press conference and will certainly have Molyneux fans exploding with excitement. Finally, for the 360, we have Crackdown, the futuristic third-person action title brought to us by David Jones, the man behind the original Grand Theft Auto. Crackdown will offer an open-ended universe which will load once and stream levels as you make your way through the online world. Get ready to crack down right before the holiday season. Kevin, I love futuristic action shooters. Now remember, you all have a part to play too. Just log on to g4tv.com slash e3 and tell us what you think is the most buzzworthy item from today's electronic dog and pony show. You can even text e3 to g4txt, that's 44898 to vote and register for e3 live news alerts. So basically, it's in your hands, guys, so choose wisely. Yes. Now, there's so much going on at E3 this year. Some stories abound to, you know, slip through the cracks. That sounds familiar. Mmm, and we are ever vigilant to prevent that from happening. That's what the feed is for. Get ready for all the E3 news you can handle. Hello, I'm Layla Cayley with all the news that matters to you, or as we insiders like to call it, the feed. <laughs> Back to the future in our top story, as Sega announces the release of Sonic Wildfire for the Nintendo Wii. In his first solo adventure since the original Sonic the Hedgehog, the spiky blue guy speeds through the Arabian Nights with moves designed to take advantage of the Wii's controller. So it took a cutting edge interface to bring back Sonic back to his roots. Sega also showed a trailer here at E3 for the Virtua Fighter 5. Two new combatants, a Mexican luchador and a female monkey kung fu expert join the original cast of Playboy characters. Sounds like my kind of party. The PS3 game will let players compete for prizes and money, which they can now spend in the game's online shop. Watch for Virtua Fighter 5 next spring. And finally, Square Enix has announced Dragon Quest Swords the Masked Queen for the Nintendo Wii. It's not quite a household name here, but Dragon Quest is the kind of game people skip work to play in Japan and hopefully in America. The new fantasy adventure title could be the key in getting Nintendo's Wii into Japanese households. And that's it for now. I was a little bit delirious. Oh, keep it tuned for G4 throughout the day for breaking news and visit us on the web at g4tv.com. Until next time, when I have some ther therapy, I'm Layla Cayley and you've been fed. All right, if you want to see more of the feed every day, you can yes. because it's part of the new G4TV.com. Yes, that's where you'll find the feed and all of the action from here at E3. Games, 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 and more games. Plus, there's the pile. G4's broadband channel filled with thousands of exclusive videos. Some that are too hot even for G4 TV. And we get pretty hot, too. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm kind of schwitzy right now. Yes. All right, G4TV.com. It's everything you want, when you want it. You know, ever since E3 imposed draconian regulations on the booth babes and limited their God-given right to express themselves through exposed flesh, I've seen a lot of disappointed faces in the crowd. They're like... Eh, forget the crowd. The booth babes are the real victims of this tragedy. And thank goodness G4 decided to do something about it. Mm -hmm. oh. E3. On the surface, a yearly convergence of video games, technology, and industry luminaries. But it's also a showcase for live, buxom women covered in video game paraphernalia. They are known as booth babes. But thanks to restrictive new E3 policies that limit provocative behavior and dress, these booth babes will have no booths to beautify. And if these sexy migrant workers are denied their traditional source of work, these booth babes will be forced to turn to other means of employment. Begging, working the street, or even worse. This is Christy. Christy, what are you reading? It's, it's, 
It's about the PS4. It's, it's okay, Christy. You can tell us. It's a law book. I'm researching a case, a case I lost. So tell us, Mr. Dellinger, what did it feel like to kill a man? Objection, Your Honor! <laughs> Christy is one of the lucky ones. Others are forced into a desperate life-and-death struggle. And to survive, these ex-Booth babes are often driven to degrade themselves, even more so than they do at E3. But you can help with booths without borders for just 80 cents a day, less than the price of a cup of coffee. You can sponsor an ex-booth bank. Your money will help provide convention center quality food, new books and education, and the regular medical checkups to make sure the babes stay as sexy as possible. You'll also receive regular updates about your booth babe and handwritten letters. In time, We'll help your babe find work she's suited for. Get a job! Get a job! So help us, won't you? Booths without borders. Send cash, form-fitting latex, or short-term corporate sponsorship deals. Mm, I feel bad now. Maybe we should organize a celebrity benefit variety show. I can play the auto harp. That's sweet, I Morgan. Can. <laughs> of course, this wasn't the last bit of booth babing artistry you'll see in our E3 coverage. We'll actually be checking in on them all week. And you can even see more privately <laughs> at g4tv.com E3. Just click on the photo gallery, start voting. All right, there is so much more E3 06 live on the way. You change that channel, I'm going to come over to your house and make you drink Zima. Drink it until you throw up, which is like one. Gaming legend John Carmack gives us an inside look at his latest title. And we get up close and personal with our favorite booth babes. Scion and Mountain Dew. All right, and now here is Kevin Pereira doing something that I so wish I was doing, playing Gears of War. Well, you get to do what I get to do, and that's watch it. But Gears of War has been called Microsoft's secret weapon in the race for console supremacy, and here to help me get locked and hopefully even loaded is the man who designed the game, Cliff Blazinski. Let's get our hands on Gears of War, brought to you by Netscape. Cliffy B, pleasure to have you here as yeah, always, sir. Good to see you Good again. You. Are you snapping pound? I'm snapping pound, Good baby, man. all the way. Uh, you're kind of a, you're a big deal here. You're a rock star here. You're the Deuce Bigelow of the gaming industry. Or uh, the, you know, the Adam I'm, Sandler, I'm, or I'm the, the uh, European gigolo, really. <laughs> you really are. Yes, I've evolved to the next level. You walk around and you get you get mobbed by booth babes and 12-year-old fanboys alike. Mostly just 12-year-old fanboys. What's it like for you? Seriously, I mean, do, 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 are, you, are you happy with the spotlight? Because you really are one of the most recognizable names and faces To be in honest, the Kevin, it's kind of the best kind of fame. Like, when you go to E3, it's completely insane. But when you're, like, day-to-day -day life at the supermarket, you're just, you know, anyone else. But so. your mom has to tell people at GameStop, my son made she that game. She keeps trying to do that, right? She's <laughs> like, she gets the magazine. She's like, it's Clifford's game. Clifford made the game. I love it. I love I it. I love All right. my mom. So you're here now with we, Gears of War. You can not only chew gum and, and walk and program all at the same time, but you're going to do the interview and play it. Yes, without a net, I'm going to play the game in front of you, in live, front of everybody running live. Off actual Absolutely. hardware. Yeah, you know, it, we got balls, man. What can I say? All right, well, let's see it. Let's let's down some energy drink. Right. I'm assuming that's what you're talking Absolutely. about. So Gears is a cover shooter, and I want to give you a quick tutorial here. We press A to get into cover, then we can press forward and A to climb over that cover. There's no jumping in this game. You're not jumping in the traditional sense. Right. You're jumping from cover point to cover point. So no bunny hopping, That's you're done with that. No, absolutely not. And so you can see it's third person, but I can target. So I get this nice, almost first person view. Very and nice. And then I can hit the reload button, and you watch my little icon in the top right when it flickers. If I hit reload again, I do an active reload, and I can reload my gun faster and faster and get a damage boost. So it's kind of this little mini game that makes the difference between a winner and a loser. And if I screw up that mini game, my gun jams. Oh, nice. So there's there's a, an incentive, but it's not just go you for it. You don't have to do it, it, and if you screw up, you blame yourself. You don't blame us. Hopefully, at least. What is what is a, you, you call this game stop and pop, which yeah. is the way I describe my tour to like UCLA sorority houses. Oh, there you uh, go. What what does that mean to the gamer? Because we're I mean we're seeing a shooter. Aren't we just running around blowing everything up? Well, the classic shooter paradigm of that whole like kind of water gun fight where people are circle strafing each other is right. not the case with gears. You see an enemy, you get down, you get your head down, you get into cover, and then you start taking them out. You go for it, you use the chainsaw, you do all the cool bits, and then 
that uh, it's really not your traditional shooter. You're leaping from cover point to cover point instead of free moving you're, throughout the environment. So you're designing these levels with that in mind. Give oh, them plenty of cover, give them some place to shoot. Absolutely. It's almost like you're a fro you're the frog and frogger, and you're going from log to log, whereas the log is the cover, well, right? Well, don't stop hopping. We want to see yeah, it. We want to see what's roll, going man. on here. Let's check this Emergence out. Day. What is emerging and when? The Locusts are emerging sometime in 2006. You know, I really can't uh, confirm or deny what that date is. They're All a right. mysterious enemy, and... Uh, they're tough, man. You, you know, you never know when they're going to Well, come you out. know, Peter was just on stage, and it, it, you got a lot of weight on your shoulder because he was saying, but don't let me stop you demoing by, by Yeah, we'll get some... But, but Peter comes up on stage and... Pr oh, hello. Nice. Peter says that, that it's pretty much on your shoulders. He says, no, no. Gears is our weapon against you the PlayStation 3. How do you feel about something like that? That's a pretty bold stake. No pressure at all. But, yeah, yeah, we, we, we got we to gotta totally handle it. Look at this. This looks amazing. So I'm I mean, holding a Y button in order to induce this. This is not a pre-scripted camera movement. This is... Uh, Next generation camera controls. So and we got the locus y, coming out here. Is it going to focus on what it deems to be the most action-packed app? Absolutely. And if there's nothing that's a point of interest, go little SWAT turn action here, blind firing. Oh, we got some fools up here too. Look at this. This is incredible. And I got to say, uh, it looks like everything else that we've seen on the PS3. I, I, I'm, uh, are you concerned at all with developing for the Xbox 360? Does it have the same power? You think? I'm not asking you to pick a winner, but no, man. I mean, in it's, terms a, of power. it's a very powerful system, but you know, it's just a matter of working with what you're given, right? I mean, we as, we as developers, Epic. I mean, developing next generation games, we have to make games that kick butt, right? For both systems. And and you're doing just that, it seems. Uh, if you had to pick a favorite, though, right now, live TV. What is it, Cliff? Uh, well, you know, I am designing Gears of War. Ooh, <laughs> that guy just blew up into tiny bits like a pinata. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Look at that. Yeah, well, odds are so we'll Gibbs are back in the game. Oh, absolutely. They I never. Miss Gibbs. It, it's it's Gibbs, dude. Jib. Oh, yeah, oh that's not start. Turn. You don't say turkey giblets, you say turkey giblets. We're Come gonna, on. All right, that's it. I'm going for your throat. Yeah, I'm we got some old-school quake fighting going on now, dude. Four-player co-op online? Two-player co-op online. Two-player co-op online. Eight-player versus multiplayer. You can actually play it at our booth. You know what? I'm going to take some grenades and hose these fools here. All right, let's do that. We're going to let you get to that. But in the meantime, Cliff, one hand off the controller so I can shake it okay, because okay. it's an awesome game. Thank it you. looks fantastic. Can I get the chainsaw mo moment in here real quick? All right, let's get a chainsaw moment in here. All Cliff right, is going to demo this go. live. He's running Ready? in here. Wait for it, wait for it. Wait. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. You just gave us an M rating for the day, sir. Thanks very My much. My pleasure. Cliff. Appreciate it. Everybody, Adam and Olivia, they're taking it away. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Stay where you are, there's lots more of that, and lots more E306 Live coming your way after the break. I am a trained empath, and I guarantee she's not lying, I'm right? Not. No. Coming up, get the latest gaming news from the PS3 Floor Report. And next, find out how your opinion measures up with the latest heat index. Stay tuned. Pretty mind-blowing stuff, but now it's time to find out what you thought. The heat index, if you please. Yes, yes. First up was Dirty Harry, which was feeling pretty lucky on the show floor. You voted and said, oh, it was oh. only warm. Do, do we actually get cooler than warm? I don't think I, we get lukewarm. <laughs> the people maybe. remember the Room temperature. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, th I think you made a good point. Does Dirty Harry still happen? I mean, the last one was The Deadpool, and I was in high school. A freshman yeah. in high school when that movie came out. Mm. So I don't know if it still has a cachet. And I was people in the are a little suspicious of movie games. I think so. I think they have every right to be. I mean, yes. you know, Olivia said it best. They have yeah. been kind of meh. Meh. Yes, all right. Now, we also showed you the new Xbox 360 lineup from Halo 3 to Lost Planet. Here's what you thought about it. You thought it was volcanic. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now that's that's a little surprising to me. I mean, I I, I love Rare and I love yeah. everything about that, yeah. but seemed uh, I was seeing v Viva Pinata there, and I thought maybe they were a little off on that one. I mean, I'm not saying that. I don't think it's Volcano because of Viva Pinata. Yeah. But okay. I mean, Lost Planet was awesome. Yes. The human was awesome. That Mass Effect, we have faith in being awesome. Um, and, and by the way, I, I played Crackdown for five seconds today, and it is one uh, next to Spore. It's yeah. the most anticipated title for me personally. Really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's a strong statement it was from a man state, of great yeah. opinion. It was incredible. <laughs> All right, Ellen. Speaking of Xbox 360, who can forget Gears of War? Yes, it was just recently we yeah. watched it, but it's <laughs> awesome. And apparently, you felt the same way. It was volcanic and I could not agree more. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Game. I like how it's not just run and gun like some of the old games. You're ducking behind cover, you're hiding behind things. The it's old great. stop and pop. And it's and scary. Pop. I gotta say, no, it's I mean, it opened the door and I literally kind of jumped yeah. a little bit. I mean, <laughs> not to look like the biggest woman on live television, but I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> I gotta I, get a chainsaw. I got some sweat on my skirt. It happened. <laughs> huh? All right, and hello, I'm Cool had this to say about the Xbox 360. I just can't wait until this game comes out so I can rub it in my friends' faces. <laughs> Viva Xbox 360. 
All right, remember, this is all based on your votes and text, so if what you like isn't up here, you have no one to blame but yourselves. Just like when Mendisa got voted off Idol, you know? So, yeah, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. All right. Log on to g4tv.com slash e3 or text e3 to g4txt. That's 44898 to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. By the way, Catherine McPhee tonight, I'm just saying. Judging going, from last night, going. I'm we'll saying her heat index on me I'm, is a little I, meh. I would love to have three guys up there. Three guys. Little no? American no Sausage Fest. She's hey, <laughs> we have to take another break because if I have to go through another hour without a bathroom run, my bladder will explode. Oh, I want to see oh, that. Ser wait. No, seriously, it's how famed astronomer Tycho Brahe died. Oh, uh -huh, well, okay. Back. But we are going to make it worth your while because there's so much more E306 live coming your way, and that's when we return. Yep. Coming up next, get the insider info from the Nintendo floor report. Then stick around for a hands-on demo of Prey as E306 Live continues. It's it all worthwhile. Yes. Welcome back to G4's exclusive insider coverage of E306 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. And Mountain Dew. E3 isn't the only thing going on at G4. We're also excited about the June premiere of Filter. Yes, Filter is hosted by the smoking hot Beth Ostrowski. It's G4's take on lists and countdown shows. It is fast, it is fun, and sometimes a bit unpredictable. Just a little bit off-center as well. Yes, that's how we like it. Filter kicks off with a countdown of the 21 most legendary parties. June 3rd at 7 p.m. right here on G4. Now, we've already hand-delivered some of the biggest things that E3 has to offer, but the best is yet to come. I personally guarantee mm -hmm. it. Kevin's right. Just listen to everything that's coming your way in the next hour. Like an extreme close-up of Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm. You can't see that anywhere else. No. Or how about all the latest games info for the Nintendo Wii? Not to mention all the game premieres and interviews that we can fit into your TV set. Yeah, it's all happening right here at E306 Live right now. Meet the master behind Doom and Quake, the legendary John Carmack. Have a sit-down with the godfather of God games, Peter Molyneux, and get an in-depth look at some of the exciting games coming along for the spanking new Nintendo Wii. G4 and Attack of the Show present E306 Live. This is G4's coverage of the biggest video game event of the year. Kevin. All right, so Scooter was taping us. I thought I'd give him a better view that of was everything. Amazing. So we've got world premieres, <laughs> news on all the latest consoles, and much, yeah. much more. Hi. Yeah. That's right. All right, you guys can't see this stuff anywhere else but G4, people. You see these folks walking around on the convention floor? These guys right here? They're physically here, and they won't be getting the same insider access that you do. No, no, no. We'll take no. you close enough to the Nintendo Wii that you can actually smell Mario's mustache wax. I'm serious. Oh, it is that a good thing? I I'm, I'm actually not sure, to be honest. Okay. But I do know that it wouldn't be E3 without our resident gaming gurus. They're right over there, this guy. This guy. Right there. They're from X-Play. Yes. They came to the party. You can't just buy their kind of expertise at the store, people. Now more than ever, it is Adam and Morgan. Thank you, Olivia. I hope yes. he gives the camera back, because I would like my Roomba one of these days. <laughs> I'm Adam Sessler, with the exception of some general fears about no one really loving me. Fears? No. Today seems right. to be going swimmingly. Now, I am Morgan Webb, and the level of hype in the building has gotten so intense that my ears are bleeding. I think it may be affecting my balance, and it's quite disgusting. But we are here for you. Our job is to cut through the hype and tell you what's really going on. And we'll continue to do that this hour because we are hard-working journalists. Today, we get an extreme close-up of Metal Gear Solid 4, FaceTime with gaming legends John Carmack and Peter Molyneux, and even a hands-on demo of Prey. All right, breathe, breathe, breathe. All right, plus... Everything you need to know about every next-gen console known to man. Except you know, that the Bears know about one other one, but that's another story. For example, did you know that the Wii is actually powered by the laughter of Japanese children? I had my suspicions. Uh -huh. And to bring you this mighty wall of show, we are not working alone, no. fortunately. We have a syndicate, a cadre of comrades out on the floor to find the big stories. I decided to begin with Mr. Zach Selwyn. That's right, Adam. I'm still here marking my territory at the Sony booth. And if you like games for the PS3, then we got them. Lots of games. And they're all coming up very shortly. In the meantime, what are you up to, Kristen Holt? Thanks, Zach. Coming 
Coming up this hour, I'm at Nintendo's booth. You want third-party support? The Wii's got third-party support. I'm going to walk you through some of the cooler offerings of the other game developers. But right now, let's check in with Kevin and Olivia. All right, thanks, Kristen. Now look, seriously, we've done our part here, busting our ass to bring you all the great stuff. Yes, and now it's time for you to do something. That's right, G4 wants to hear what you have to say. Just log on to G4TV.com slash E3 and vote in our heat index. That's where you get to tell us what you liked best at today's expo. You can even text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. That's right, get those fingers clack and talk backers because at the end of the hour, we'll be reading some of your comments live on the air. That's right. And now two people who rate volcanic on my own personal heat index. Adam and Morgan. Oh, thank Aww. you, Olivia. Oh, shucksies. If you're like me, oh, gosh, you've probably been wondering <laughs> what Solid Snake has been up to. Yeah, Snake has been very busy making card battle games for the PSP because <laughs> who doesn't love a good, solid card battle game? The same. Mm -hmm. But Snake is getting back into the stealth business in a big way because Metal Gear Solid 4 is here, and it's coming soon to the PS. Three. Here is an extreme close-up of what promises to be Hideo Kojima's most engaging adventure yet, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. Wow, he's pretty spry for a senior citizen. In Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, the main man is back, and he's looking older than a Viagra joke at the improv. Fanboys are speculating that his new Medicare-ready appearance may be caused by some sort of cloning-induced cell deterioration. I hate it when that happens. The last couple installments both feature different lead characters, so the good news is you finally get to play as Solid Snake again, even if he does look ancient. As if that weren't enough, a lot of other classic characters are back, including perky love interest Meryl Silverberg, straight-shooting bad guy Revolver Ocelot, and everyone's favorite girly man, Raiden. We just hope you don't have to play as him this time. The new footage we glimpse raised a lot more questions than answers. As far as we can tell, the future is a very bleak place, and it's up to you to somehow end the conflict by, well, ending yourself. Don't do it, Snake. You have so much to live for, like Metal Gear Solid 5. If you were confused by the complicated storylines of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 and 3, well, you're screwed. It looks like Part 4 will be just as bizarre as those entries. So, if you're hungry for more Snake, you, Metal Gear Solid 4 is set to hit store shelves in 2007. All right, if you'd like to learn more about Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, consult your local library. Yes. Or maybe just go to g4tv.com slash e3. Yeah. All right, after that much excitement, I may not need my evening constitutional. I haven't felt this much adrenaline since I killed that girl. What? Kevin and Olivia, back to you. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly oh, ended that poor, poor girl's life. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to Nintendo, especially to their Wii, than a silly little name, right? Yeah, there's the in innovative controllers, the lower price, the adorable games with non-threatening villains like Bowser and Ganon. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's why we put Kristen Holt in a pink dress and sent her <laughs> back to Nintendo's booth. Here's her lovely report. I'm in the middle of Nintendo's massive booth here on the floor to see what third-party developers have dreamt up for the Wii. Check it out. Wildfire from Sega sets the blazing blue hero on his first solo mission since the original 1991 game. Wildfire uses the Wii controller to help Sonic quickly dodge oncoming objects by tilting it, and you can send Sonic into a dash attack by flinging it forward. Look for Wildfire in 2007. Tony Hawk is taking things vertical, way vertical, in Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam. The game sends Tony and his friends careening downhills, trying to finish first any way they can. On the Wii, you use the remote to control your turn. It wouldn't be a Tony Hawk game without tricks, but try to stay on the board. From newcomer developer Monster Games is the Wii's first racing title, Excite Truck. This game allows the Wii remote to show off its steering wheel chops quite nicely. If you run into one of the many scattered question marks on the track, the ground will dramatically shift, giving you huge air if you ramp off of it. Look for Excite Truck soon after the Wii's launch. Well, 
it's nice to see that third-party developers are just as excited about the new remote as we are. And it looks like Nintendo is making believers out of everyone. Thank you so much, Kristen. Everybody, there's lots more E306 Live after the break. While we're gone, go get some Windex and wipe down your TV screen. You're definitely going to want to see this in an unobstructed view. That's a kind of fumble to know. It's all right. Lick your screen. You'll be fine. <laughs> Up next, God Game superhero Peter Molyneux takes us on a tour through the vast landscape of Fable as E306 Live continues. Welcome back to E306 Live presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I hope you guys were able to relax during the break because we are about to raise your blood pressure. Um, mine's already up. I uh, ate a fried Twinkie from the concession stand. So uh, while I make an appointment with a cardiologist, why don't you guys just check in with Adam Sessler? Well, thank you, Olivia. I, I hope everything works out fine. Our next guest is one of the few developers who always promises to look at games in new ways, and he does. That's why it's such a real honor to score some FaceTime with Lionhead Studio founder, Peter Molyneux. Peter Molyneux is known as the father of God Games and for bringing extraordinary worlds to life. In 1989, Molyneux brought us the first game in this genre, Populous. Now he's president of Lionhead Studios and responsible for the huge hits Black and White 1 and 2 and Fable for the Xbox. So, you've learned some new moves, have you? Molyneux is currently working on a sequel to Fable and expansions for Black and White 2 and the movies. It goes without saying, we can't wait to see what new innovations and immersive worlds Molyneux will be creating next. All right, Peter, it is, it is always a pleasure to, to, to have you here. Um, you've been a little busy, because I believe in the past year we've seen Fable, we've seen Black and White 2, yeah. and we saw the movies. All right, yeah. do, do, do you have any energy left? Yeah, I, amazingly, yes. Good, I mean, good, it, good. It, it was an incredibly busy year. I mean, something slipped, and then they all came together. Right. It, it's a bit like in England, we, all of our buses, you're standing at a bus stop, and then all the buses come together at, at, at all at the same time. And it was a bit like that with the games. We had, you know, as you say, Black and White 2, the movies, and, and two versions of Fable. And, and, and we were very lucky to have gotten all those. So let's, let's start with Fable. I think by your own admission, Fable fell a little bit short of what you initially had hoped to do. What, what, what have you learned sort of from that process that you can apply to future games? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Uh, the first thing is, you know, sometimes I just keep my mouth shut. Because, <laughs> you know, I, if you know me, all you have oh, to yes, do is give me half a beer and I will just <laughs> run off into the wild woods. And you think that was water you had yeah, that I, Exactly. I think it was because I feel like talking. Um, and uh, that, that's the first thing. The second thing is that we are really dedicating ourselves to making Fable 2 as good as we possibly can. And that is by delivering on some of those promises that were there. But also, you know, I felt that I really wanted to give in Fable things that people had never seen in the game before. Right. And, uh, you know, and you know, something the, the, with the alignment and finding out who you really are, the changing world, and all of those things. Definitely have those things in Fable too. But I also want to throw a few curveballs in there. And I want some features in there. There's one particular feature, uh -huh. which is, you know, I think, people would find totally unexpected. Uh -huh. Now, I can't tell oh, you what that is, because otherwise I'll get in terrible trouble again. All but right. it is, all I can say is I haven't, I can't think of any games I've seen in it before. It is something which I, you really have to experience, and it's, it's, it's now, cool. Ken, now, is, is, is this something that you can do only because of the next-gen hardware? Are you seeing a lot of what you've always wanted to do opening up because of the 360 and potentially the PS3 and Wii? Yeah, you know, it, I, I think games are changing a lot now because of the hardware. It's not just the physical box and what it's capable of doing. For me, as a designer, the biggest change, and this control, control stuff is really interesting, the biggest change is online. I really? kind of know that a lot of the people that play Fable 2 will be online. Now, if you can imagine, take the concepts of Fable and mm -hmm. just think about, you know, find out who you really are, the world will change and sculpt itself around you. What happens if you throw a few of, a few of your friends in there? What happens to that design experience? So just let that bubble around your imagination. Not right, that well, I'm saying right. it's in the game, by the way. I have some 12-year-old scotch backstage. Right, We're gonna okay. do, do something with the audience. We're gonna go <laughs> okay. have a chat a little bit later. Well, okay, how about we say throw back to you, Kevin and Morgan. 
Thank you so much for that, Adam. E306 Live will be back in a moment. And yes, before you even ask, that's an accurate unit of time measurement. All right, we'll try to figure out a way to get up and make yourself a snack without taking your eyes off a TV set. I recommend Lunchable. Stay tuned for a sit down with the creator of Quake Wars. Then get a hands on demo of the thrilling new shooter, Prey. Presented as always by Scion and Mountain Dew, I'm Morgan Webb. The LA Convention Center may be buzzing with activity, but Kevin Pereira is a paragon of strength and calm. Here he is now with a hands-on demo of Prey. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Morgan. Now, the first-person shooter Prey has been in and out of development since 1995 or so, but after countless delays, it's finally ready. So let's find out whether or not it was worth the wait as we go hands-on with Prey. Joining me right now is Project Lead from Human Head Studios, Chris Reinhardt, and playing the game is James Sumwalt, co-owner and art director. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Pleasure to have you here. Uh, we got the demo going on right now, and I notice uh, it's being played with a 360 controller. Is this, uh, is this the first outing for you guys in the next-gen console, really showing it off? This is, actually. Uh... Uh, Prey is going to be simultaneous on both PC and on the 360. We figured today we'd bring along the 360 version and uh, let you guys check it out. Well, i got to say, uh, hats off to you, because I thought, you know, we saw, I saw it getting played before the interview here, and, and I thought it was the PC version, so you definitely did a good job of uh, oh, the, keeping the, it up the, the 360 version actually being done by a company called Venom. They're doing a fantastic job with it, of basically taking it. Frame rate's good. I mean, all the art assets are, are pretty much identical to the PC version. That's great. Now, now you were on Attack of the Show a while back. We were oh, chatting. Yeah. Now we're here yeah, at yeah, E3. Yeah. What has changed since, since uh, we last spoke? Has it just been more polish? Uh, have you decided right. to change the storyline again? Switch engines? I don't know what, what you guys are doing. Oh, yeah, we threw everything out. We good. started all of Get rid of all the assets, Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, you know, done when it's done. Now, um, basically, uh, the main thing we've done, actually, is, is tweaking and polishing. We're pretty much deep in beta right now. We're really, really close to being done. Uh, the main thing is, like, we're just going back and forth with 3D Realms. They're sending us comments, change this, fix that. And we're just bouncing back and forth. Have they asked you to change the, the main character to Duke so they could get that one out as well, or no? You no, they like fun. this guy as okay, well. Good, they, like, good. they like Tommy a lot. What's, what's the story with Tommy here? Elevator pitch me. What are, what are we in? Where are we walking? And why can we walk on walls like Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Well, right now we're in an alien environment. The player, named Tommy, is a Cherokee garage mechanic. Not really interested in his life, wants to get out, out of his reservation, and he gets out in an unexpected way when aliens abduct him and take him on the ship. Okay. So now we're battling these aliens trying to get back into our life, and I see He's a trying hawk. to find his girlfriend trying to get off the ship, yeah. Now what's the hawk flying around? That's not his little lady friend, is it? No, no that's not. Okay, good. I'm just making sure. There's, there's websites for this kind of thing. I hope it's not your game. <laughs> what's the deal with the, with the hawk flying around? The, the bird right there, his name is Talon. Kind of a little throwback reference to the old version to the old of Prey. Prey. Yes. Exactly. Um, the bird is kind of like Tommy's spirit hawk. He's like his pet as a boy, reincarnated as this bird. Um, the bird has a couple of different abilities, like right here, he has the ability to, to uh, uh, translate the alien text. He'll land on consoles, he'll translate it for, so the player can understand it. Also, when you have the bird, he can uh, um, actually attack enemies or distract them. So if you're fighting multiple enemies, the bird will fly out, distract one of them, lets you get the drop on him, take him out while, you know, while you're fighting the other guys. Oh, that's a really, really cool concept. I, I like that you guys did that, and I like that you also, you made death not a reason for me to load up a menu screen and find my last save or, or press F9 and go to a quick save. Absolutely. What happens when you die in the new Prey? In Prey, death is, death is kind of a thing of the past. I mean, you still can die, sure. but instead of like game over done, you go to this little underworld realm called, that we call Death Walk. Fight, you have a little mini game, takes maybe uh, you know, 10, 15 seconds, really quick, uh, and then you're back right where you died. Or wow. right, you know, right where you left off. You pick right back up. So, so the game is like a continuous experience. I like it. Now, now the big talk about Prey back then was portal tech. All right. Oh, we're seeing, we're seeing the death world here. Uh, what is the portal tech? Uh, it's not probably in use here, but, but how have you taken that into this game? Uh, portal tech. Basically, the big thing, that was one of the main things that 3D Realms wanted to carry over from the original version. Have to have portals. So the big thing with portals is they're essentially like tears in space. You know, they take you from one spot to another. It's totally seamless. You can shoot through it. Enemies know about them. You can just run through it totally smooth. Um, but we can use them to do a couple of different things. You know, we can use them to do puzzles where you can't even, you don't even realize that there's a portal there. Right. You just walk through it, and just crazy, crazy things happen with it. You walk through a thing, you drop through the ceiling. If you've seen the end of Monsters, Inc., it's kind of like that with all the doorways. We can do all of that stuff. Awesome. Well, Chris, the game looks great, and if people are here at E3, they can play it multiplayer on the show floor, right? Absolutely. For a couple of different places. Love we're it. at the 2K booth, and we're at the Microsoft booth. Thanks for coming on to show it off. Excellent Thank demo you. there, sir. Thank Everybody, you. it's Prey. You're going to get it, so just go ahead and pre-order. All right, Adam, Olivia, I understand you have something that you, you want to you talk about, so feel free to take it away. 
Thanks, Thanks, Kev. If you're enjoying this programming and wondering how you can indulge in more video game TV, I just might have the answer really? for you. Really? Yes. Cool. There's a video game mashup, TV's only daily block dedicated to all things video game. Yes, and the heart of the mash mashup is that show I know a lot about, X-Play. That's where Morgan Webb and I play and review every game we get our hands on. The mashup is three full hours of cheats, tips, tricks, and our brutally honest game reviews. Don't miss X-Play and the rest of the mashup weekdays from 4 to 7 p.m. right here on G4. All right, surely there must be some exclusive PS3 news floating around out there. Let's check in with my new best friend, Zach, who's on the scene at the Sony booth. What have you guys got for us? Yeah, you know I couldn't stay away from the Sony booth. I'm still here keeping warm and hanging out with all my people. <laughs> out some of these other games right about now. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, sweet. That's what Gran Turismo HD looks like on the PS3. Yeah, it's Gran Turismo 4, but now it's all high defy and cranked up like Lindsay Lohan post Herbie. High speed racing should always look this good. We all should look this good. Present company excluded. Ah, Japan, home of giant monsters, Ichiro Suzuki, and a language I cannot understand. But it's also home to Genji 2. So everything evens out in my book. This look at ancient Japan with some hacking and slashing thrown in should satisfy your ancient culture hunger. Which brings us back to racing. If Gran Turismo was at your cup of $5 latte, then why not get all Formula One on yourself with Formula 106? This game ain't fooling around. And the 06 means this year, get it, because it's 2006. But the racing, oh, the racing is timeless. I'll tell you, I'm exhausted, but not to worry. I'm going to be hanging out here, bringing you everything that Sony has to offer. Stick around, my friends. I promise I'll be right back. Thanks, Zach. All right, everyone, don't go anywhere, because E3 will be back faster than you can say the name of the guy who was the sound engineer for Final Fantasy VI. You mean Eiji Nakamura? Oh, you are good. Damn straight. Hmm. After the break, an in-depth look at the game everyone's talking about, Quake Wars, as G4 continues its exclusive coverage of E306. E306 Live is also brought to you by Sony Pictures Classic, Art School Confidential. Greetings, it is I, Layla Kaylee, and I bring you the news, otherwise known as the feed. <laughs> There's more to the PS3 than meets the eye, or less, depending on which model you pick. Amid all the love for Sony's next-gen platform, nobody seems to have noticed that the lower-cost PS3 is missing more than just a few gigabytes of storage. The $599 version offers all the next-gen features gamers have predicted, including 1080p, video output, Wi-Fi support, and memory stick ports. But the $499 model is practically a different machine altogether, with none of those options. So unless Sony plans to sell kits to let users install these features on their own, serious gamers are stuck paying $600 for a PS3. Sorry, guys. But no matter what you pay for your PS3, Sony Computer Entertainment President Ken Kutaragi thinks it's probably too cheap because he's trying to milk you for all the money he can get. In an interview with Japan's IT media, Kutaragi asked, is it not nonsense to compare dinner at the company cafeteria with dinner at a fine dining restaurant? Well, Ken, let me answer that question with a question for you. Why are you eating dinner at work anyway, you cheap sod? And finally... <laughs> The game that contributed more than any other to Sony's dominance is leveling the playing field. Microsoft announced that the next Grand Theft Auto game will be available for both PS3 and Xbox 360 on the same day, October 16, 2007. So, running down pedestrians is now something we can all share in together. I just run one down a second ago. That's all for now. Keep it tuned for G4 throughout the day for breaking news. And visit us on the web at g4tv.com. I'm Layla Kaylee, and I really hope you're not coming hungry anymore. Hungry? Sorry, I'm hungry. And now you've been fed.
Now, if you want more of the feed, fear not, you can get it on Attack of the Show. That's right. Starting this Monday, things are going to look very different. We have a new set, some new faces, but that same Attack of the Show attitude. And those crazy monitor head guys, Yes. Too. They're coming. Yes. And coming up this year, AOTS breaks out with week-long road trips in July. We'll crash the superhero of conventions with Comic-Con Live. August, we'll head to Sin City, Las Vegas, for a week of the sights and sounds that only AOTS can bring you. And in September, we are off to Tokyo, the place that really is defining what's next, including animation, gadgets, and, of course, video games. It all starts Monday with an all-new Attack of the Show right here at 7 p.m. You know the great thing about video games based on World War II is that finally you and your grandfather have a, a shared experience to bond over. He took shrapnel in the south of France. It took you eight tries to get past the south of France level. See, you're so close. Well, your bonding can continue with THQ's Company of Heroes for the PC. Here is the exclusive premiere. I hope you guys like commercials. They are magnificent pageants to the glory of capitalism, just like E3. And we have a few coming up next. But after that, lots of exclusive coverage from the expo floor. Keep it there. Yeah. No, really. Want to know what makes John Carmack tick? Find out when we sit down with this gaming luminary as E306 Live continues. Those guys have so much energy, I think we should haul them up here and help us out. No, because it'll, it'll show how drained we are from all the gaming goodness. No, we're not drained. Not at all. No. Welcome back to E306 Live, presented by Sion and Mountain Dew. I'm Kevin Pereira, and seriously, my eyes aren't dry. I'm just actually blinking a discreet SOS message. <laughs> yes, and I'm Adam Sessler. You know, Kevin, periodically I enjoy listening to my X-Play co-host just talk for exactly 60 seconds. Oh. It's a fun way of testing my ability to internally calculate time. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Look out, people. It's the Morgan Minute. OK, I admit it. I'm a fangirl with some games. You know, hands sweating, pulse pounding. But if you saw Okami last year at E3, you would be excited, too. Oh, no. I feel a fangirl moment coming on. Let's not talk about that, OK? But back to Okami. Capcom plays off the themes of color in this Japanese-inspired adventure. As the sun goddess in wolf's clothing, you must bring vibrant rays of life to the gray void. Magic comes from the tip of a calligraphy brush as you create or destroy with every master stroke. It won't take long before your godlike Bob Ross powers are turning monsters into little happy trees. From the neat character designs to every flower that rises from your steps, Okami's luscious style transports the player not only to one of the most beautiful worlds on the PS2, but one you won't easily walk away from. Even though Okami is hitting stateside this fall, a game that actually delivers on its promises is worth getting excited over. It's been a minute, and I've been Morgan. 61. Oh, she's good. She's good. Thanks, Morgan. Yes, folks, the edutainment just keeps on coming. It's like a freight train made of cable hosts. We can't stop it now, sorry. So let's just check in with Jeff Keeley. Thank you, Kevin. Our next guest is a genuine legend who's helped shape the landscape of PC gaming. Get ready for some FaceTime with John Carmack. It's hard to imagine the world of PC games without John Carmack. In 1991, he developed the first first-person shooter, Wolfenstein 3D. <laughs> He went on to bring us two of the largest PC game franchises, Quake, one of the first games with competitive online play, 
and Doom, one of the most controversial games of all time. And John Carmack has some pretty unusual hobbies. He collects exotic sports cars and he builds his own spacecraft. Now Carmack's latest, Quake Wars, a team-based battleground shooter set in the Quake environment. John Carmack, welcome to G4 Live. So let's talk about Quake Wars, which is the big game you guys are showing here for the PC. It looks fantastic. Now, you're doing some new technology in this one, right? You got something called Mega Textures? Yeah, well, my part in Quake Wars has been uh, a pretty small, uh, it's sort of the essence of a technical direction here, where I provided a few small core pieces of technology, and it was really rewarding to see how the Splash Damage guys understood the value of this, understood the potential, they really ran with it. Vast so, outdoor sort of environment, something you couldn't yeah. do in Doom 3, right? Yeah, so the core piece of technology that uh, I developed for this is something that we've termed mega texture, but right. it's, a, it's essentially just a way of managing extremely large textures. In this case, we've got textures that are like 32,000 by 32,000, right. there's a dozen of them in the game. And there's a lot of different ways to manage textures. Every game for the last decade has had some form of texture management on there, and there's always these sets of trade-offs in that, and usually it's a matter of- lets you create of, these sort of yeah, big, you know, battle swapping maps things right. in and out, but this was a way to go about uh, having enormous textures and having them smoothly work between the different levels of detail and everything right. there. And that's interestingly also turned out to be the basis of an evolution of that technology that's going on in the current development work that we're doing at id Software. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about that too now, but first I want to ask you about the sort of the console war, because you're a guy mm -hmm. that people always look to for sort of the inside scoop on, you know, PlayStation 3 versus Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Now, we're seeing good PS3 games here, but a lot of people are saying they don't look like there's a big delta between them and the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Do you think, I mean, is PS3 going to be more powerful than 360, or do you think that's, that's what it is? Well, the situation's not something that has the nice, simple answer like that, because the truth is the PS3 has more peak performance on there, and that's what Sony was looking for on there, right. with the choices that they made in the cell architecture in particular, and to a lesser degree, some of the, the video uh, chip decisions on there. Right. It gives it more theoretical power, but what's gonna matter is what you wind up delivering on the game. And I do think that Sony made a less optimal decision than Microsoft from the perspective of the game developers, because right. Microsoft chose to have symmetrical CPUs, have less of them, but you can program them all the same way. And Sony way. has this weird sort of cell architecture, which there's been a lot of PR about, but it's very difficult, I hear, to program, right? It's asymmetric, right? where you have one processor with dual threads that are symmetric on there, where you do most of your work, but then anything that you want to spin, spin off to the cells, you have to break up into these small nuggets of work right. and use a different compiler, different tool chain for so it. So bottom line, you think it was a mistake for them to go that way? I do. I think yeah. that the reasoning that somewhat saves them is Sony has the dominant market position over Microsoft, and they can look at this and say developers are essentially forced to sweat blood uh, right. to go ahead and take advantage of the cell because it's the dominant platform. And they'll win to some degree like that, where there will be developers that pour their heart and soul into this right. and make development twice as difficult as it should be <laughs> to go ahead and work on the cell. And Sony's hoping that by having this higher peak performance there and having developers that will absolutely sweat bullets over right. this, that Guys they'll like get better you, games right? out of it. Well, we are looking at it. We're not uh, a first party or even second party developer on right. here. So we are looking at it across both 360, PS3, and PC. And the great part is none of these consoles stink. None of right. these platforms are bad, where in previous generations, we could look at it and say some of these things are like, oh, this really is painful. <laughs> but the, what the, about the Wii, stuff, though? Graphics there, I mean, that's, that's not what it's about, right? Yeah, it's a little bit behind. We're not on board with uh, the Nintendo right. side of things right now. Uh, we are focusing on the platforms that are a lot closer to the specs on there. And PS3, 360, and PC, we can develop a that's good title new games that's going to be across all of them. Cool. All right, John. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate good. it. Okay, back to you, Olivia. Thanks, Jeff. Right. We are about to take a break, so use your time wisely. Get those last-minute heat index votes in, people, especially you guys in Florida and Ohio. Remember what happened the last time you forgot to vote? Up next, find out what's burning up the show floor as we check the latest results of the heat index. Stay tuned. Come on! Come on. Keep up, but hopefully you guys at home did because it's time to check the heat index. That's right. Now Nintendo talked about their Wii lineup this hour, which included Red Steel, Metroid Prime 3, and Super Mario Galaxy. What did you guys think? Though? That's what matters, of course. Volcanic. Whoa, Everybody people are wants seeing to... what we've been seeing. Yeah, like everyone wants to get the sword. Whoosh. Gotta love it. Love it. Now John Carmack, the creator of Doom, stopped by to show off his latest game, 
enemy territory quake wars. Here's what you said. You said it was scorching, Ooh. scorching Ooh. hot. I'm personally very excited for this yeah. game. I mean, the mega yeah. texture, yada, yada. Look, it yeah. just looks like a really fun, awesome game. And it's outdoors. Outdoors. Yep. It's the new three engine outdoors. Keep All right, we people open. like quake. Yes. Yes. All right, following that, we also opened up a can of Xbox 360 goodness when we went hands on with Prey. Did you guys like it? Hot. Wow. Mm. Wow. Not as exciting. Same uh, technology. I'm going to go with scorching. Really? You like it that much? Yeah, I, know. I could be wrong. Yeah. All right, well, we'll find out when we All play right. it. Yeah. And here's what Militia Gung 64 said about the Wii lineup. With Zelda, Metroid, and Mario, how can this e get any more perfect than a perfect score? If you guys didn't like the results of the Heat Index, then don't just sit there sulking, you big baby. Aww. Get up and do something about it. That's right, Kevin. Get over to G4TV.com slash E3 and vote. Or, as always, you can text E3 to G4TXT. That's 44898 to vote. And register for E3 Live News Alerts. Yes, I hope you're just going to stretch, because leaving now would be a really big mistake. <laughs> yes, there is more E3 06 Live coming your way. Stay tuned. After the break, Catch up on all of tomorrow's excitement as G4 continues with exclusive coverage of E3 06 Live. Scion and Mountain Dew now. If all this E3 bombardment has only whetted your appetite for more, you're our kind of viewer. Stick around because tonight on the old G4, we'll be showing all three hours of today's show yet again, followed by Midnight Spank with the premieres of Cheaters and Ed the Sox Night Party. I think you can uh, handle it. I think you'll be all right. I, th I think yeah. it'll be okay. Yeah. I think they will. Yes, yeah, so coming on just much. What it is, is it? Midnight okay. in this? And also, I believe this weekend we're also going to be able to see more of our um, charming E3 coverage back to back to back to back. Yeah, yes. I, I got to tell you, we live all relive the sweating the and the thinking and all of that. I was saying, all the moistness. I was saying yeah. three hours a day for four days. Clearly, I mean, come yeah. on, is there going to be up to show? Now I'm concerned that we're not going to get it all in. Well, John Carter's exactly. interview was so great. We got down to a little nitty gritty, a little tec technical talk, which yes. we haven't gotten to do. Asymmetrical with some of the other processing. Nice. Yes. yes. Please tell me more. The nerds love a little asymmetrical processing. I don't it. think we ever. I don't think that's ever been said on television. No. And asymmetrical. Processing. That was a watershed <laughs> moment, everybody. Watershed. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, Olivia, highlights of the day for you? Uh, just being here. I was able to get to the front of the of the whole convention thing for the first yeah. time. There's so much back right. there. You don't need to go any further, no. honestly. You've seen, <laughs> the front. Yeah. You've seen it all. You get the smells. That's well, all there's that one guy with the really cheap, you know, food that I don't even know works for the convention center. Yeah. Oh, I mean every single yeah. concession stand here. Yes, that, that can explain my frequent absences, maybe. <laughs> and, and, and the margaritas that make the entire convention just sticky, and you don't even want to know where that came from. Yeah, and then it gets worse on Friday. Yes. All well, that's right. all we have left in the tank here at day two of the Electronic Entertainment Expo. A relaxing, that is not an option. No. There's still two more days for the gaming news, interviews, and Canadian tax planning software left. Yeah, Cannot that's wait. that's right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yes. be great. Everybody, keep it locked right here on G4. We'll be back with more live E3 coverage tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. And if you can't wait till then, check out G4TV.com slash E3 for all the sights, sounds, and smells of the L.A. Convention Center right on your computer. Now get some sleep. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Oh, yeah. my God. Someone's hey. throwing clothes. Shirts, anybody? Oh, yeah. Get out there. Get out there.